There we go. So good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Saskatchewan State Midterm Meeting. I'd like to uh, recognize our worthy state chaplain, Father Ed Gibney, who's on the screen around here. Our worthy state associate chaplain, Bishop Brian Beta, coming all the way from Toronto. Our uh, worthy supreme official representative, the Make sure I get the uh, the term properly. Oh. The Territorial Growth Director for Canada, Brother Alain Caillé, past day deputy of Ontario. The uh, Regional Training Director, Brother Ryan, De the Regional RTD. Regional Training Regional Growth Director. Sorry, I'm going to get get these backwards. Brother Brother Ryan Dahan, coming from. BC, and I'm not sure if the regional training director, which is would be Sean Vetters, would might also be popping in. So, at this time, I'd like to uh, invite our state chaplains, Father Ed and Bishop Brian. I, I'm assuming Father Ed will begin and turn it over to Bishop Brian to give this opening prayer and and any address they have. We didn't uh, organize anything, so I will, I, 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 I will, it's between us, I should say, so I thought I'd just start with the, uh, the prayer, uh, because of the ICON program this year, that we could start with the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel, and then if uh, Bishop Brian wants to add anything after that, uh, we'll let him do that. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May, may God re rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, it into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Yes. Christ our Lord. Amen. And I would join uh, also with the prayer for the canonization of Blessed Michael McGivney. God our Father, protector of the poor and defender of the widow and orphan, you called your priest, Blessed Michael McGivney, to be an apostle of Christian family life and to lead the young to the generous service of their neighbor. Through the example of his life and virtue, May we follow your son, Jesus Christ, more closely, fulfilling his commandment of charity and building up his body, which is the church. Let the inspiration of your servant prompt us to greater confidence in your love, so that we may continue his work of caring for the needy and outcast. We humbly ask that you glorify blessed Michael McGivney on earth according to the design of your holy will. Through his intercession, grant the favor I now present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pardon me, just I had invited uh, any of the other when I met with the bishops. Uh, a week and a half ago, I just want to make sure there was none of the other bishops on if they wanted to uh, speak. If anybody sees either Archbishop Don or Archbishop Murray or Bishop Albert, please uh, shoot me a text so I'm aware. Um, Alrighty. Thank you very much this time, I guess we have to establish the purpose of what this, this meeting is about. And I'm hoping to uh, enlighten, energize, hopefully not distress a whole lot, but uh, try and get everybody motivated and excited. I know a long time ago, nobody signed up to be a district deputy or program director during a, a COVID pandemic period. Uh, I remember back in March, everybody, oh, this will be done by June. And then in June, this will be done by school. And and uh, we recognize that that is no longer the case. Uh, so as we kind of move forward, uh, 
proof of this weekend is we're not getting together. We have to recognize the, the safety of our brother knights, our, our parishes, our communities. So I appreciate everyone's patience and understanding for uh, the need to do this remotely. Uh, kind of hope that'll be a, a prayer for the rest of the weekend is just to make sure everyone does remain safe and continues to uh, uh, live a life of, of uh, representing a, a good night in our parishes and our communities. So I will get things running. Share screen. Perfect. It's nice when things work on the first try. See if it continues to work. So, first of all, thank you. For joining us this weekend thank you thank you thank you for when i called back in march april may june and thank you for continuing to stay on since again i, I recognize that uh, the situation we're in is not what everybody signed up for it's not the traditional uh, scenario we've been hoping for so thank you for everything you're trying to do every day to grow the order uh, we continue to have something to do something special to do even in these day and age uh, as we'll see in uh, our Supreme Knights address, uh, if everybody remembers that the Knights of Columbus was formed during a pandemic. So it, it's ironic, uh, yet special that he was deemed blessed during uh, a pandemic 138 years later. So it's to recognize how history is repeating itself and how the world is advancing, yet repeating is is uh, something we need to be aware of. So thank you for being all the leaders in the jurisdiction of Saskatchewan. Uh, hopefully our weekend objective is to uh, provide you with information related to Saskatchewan's goals. Um, I guess get reacquainted with everyone's faces because we haven't been able to get together with bumping elbows and, and chatting and, and shooting the breezes we used to. Uh, hopefully we're going to give you the tools and the resources you need to lead your councils to for another successful year. And uh, we're gonna identify some areas needing attention. Just we're at the mid, basically the midpoint. Uh, now is a good time to uh, recognize those. So these are, we'll go through our state plan, our Saskatchewan, which is our Saskatchewan goal review. Uh, at one point we'll do some membership update. Uh, I'll touch on some award reminders. I know uh, State General Program Director Eugene will touch on these as well faith and action programs and communications and social media we'll touch on. So as I shared back in, I have to, to recognizing what's on my screen is, is on yours as well. So here's our uh, state team. I sh just showed you the past uh, Supreme team. But as we expand our, our team, we want to make sure everyone is, is aware of who's out there. Uh, state rosters have been distributed. I'm hoping everyone has gotten them by now. If not, please let me know. But uh, our, our team continues to grow and uh, hopefully providing and offering better support for the councils and, and all the district deputies and what. As I'd mentioned back, in July, we had uh, our Saskatchewan playbook. Uh, it's, it's Supreme has been adapting and updating just to evolving just so we can uh, continue to grow each jurisdiction based on its needs and requirements. So being this is the, this will be our mid-year review. So we can uh, cruise it real quick. Overall goal is to always attain the circle of honor. And for those who aren't aware, the Saskatchewan has attained the Circle of Honor in the last four of six years. Um, oh. After my presentation, I do have the Canada Cup finally in my possession. Um, I sent some pictures onto the board, but just to recognize 
past eight, we're the immediate past eight deputy, Chris. Um, currently, we're the state treasurer, but at the time, state membership director, Marty Clemente Nogot, and I believe the online director was uh, Brother James Nesman, so we'll recognize them later. Uh, other goals is we want, want to identify and invite all eligible Catholic men to the order, and currently we want to uh, pay special attention to younger men, as well as men of uh, diverse cultures. So want to make sure we're in, including everyone and in inviting all eligible men to join us. Uh, since our July meeting is our online members, we want to move them from the state roster to councils. Uh, we'll touch a little bit more on that. I know our online chairman, Brother Abel DeSaw, has worked hard with Dan to, with our state membership director to get these uh, addressed at the council level now. We want to promote spiritual events. And I recognize that right now that might seem a little bit of a challenge. Uh, that's where the trying to promote online options, uh, Zoom, go to meetings, uh, we, can, we can do into the breach. We can promote spiritual, uh, the rosary program, the fifth Sunday rosary program, do some spiritual reflection. And I know they are planning for the men's spiritual enrichment weekend on March 13th in 2021. The Supremes Leave No Neighbor Behind program. We want to continue. Uh, this is a program that every council can do, whether they are technically able to or not. This is something that can be done uh, personally, remotely. It's something that everyone can do because it, uh, it supports our communities, our parishes, our brother knights, everyone who's needing help. Here. The membership team, just so people are aware, just is, is over time, it, uh, it's continued to grow. We have our state membership director, Brother Dan Devers out of Regina, our online members chairman, Brother Abel DeSaw here in Saskatoon. We have two member, two council slash member retention chairman. We have a northern and a southern. Um, lucky to have two past eight deputies. I wasn't giving them easy jobs, people know, but uh, current immediate past eight deputy. Chris Mancharski and for the North and for the South, we're the past day Deputy Brian Schatz. I'd like to thank them very much for staying on. Our round table chairman continues to be Brother Al Dion. He's doing such a fantastic job. We couldn't let him go away. Our cultural diversity chairman, we're the state uh, treasurer, Marty Clemente Nogat and his committee. And I believe those two, those, uh, two members and will be, might be joining us later. Our state ceremonials director, past day Deputy Brother Dennis Kerrigan. Uh, our cluster leaders continue to be a source, which is your state board, and who's also on the membership team, which is the most important part, is you and every member, because every member of the Knights of Columbus is responsible for recruiting. So don't let uh, anyone just pass the buck and say, oh, it's it's someone else. We are all responsible. So. Communicating membership information, just a quick overlay is everybody's where we have our our newsletter, we have our website. Uh, we're trying to uh, monitor the amount of information we're sending. Uh, Brother Peter Folk, who continues to do a fantastic job on our uh, newsletters and our sending out of information, as well as the state office. Uh, Brother Jerry, at the state executive secretary. Uh, I want to thank them very much. Um, for those who aren't aware, Work on the camera here. Is we know that uh, back in September, you'll have noticed how Supreme has reduced the amount of emails being sent. Uh, they heard um, everyone based on their survey to, uh, and they're trying to control the amount of emails going out. And hopefully, people recognize the states trying to do the same. We knew that people were being overwhelmed with emails, so everyone is trying to work on a balance. Uh, but having said that, it's, uh, it's, it's frustrating for myself and many when we hear people say they didn't know of an event. Uh, and if it's, you know, we're trying to do our best to share it, emails, calls, texts, and uh, we're, we're, we will be working on a social media chairman to try other avenues to share information. 
So just to touch base on what the major role and responsibilities of you, the district deputies, uh, many might know, but uh, want to just review them anyways. Uh, to remind when ports, reports are due, just councils sometimes need that uh, gentle nudge. Uh, to promote membership growth and retention in councils. You know, we want to promote the online membership, promote the new combined degree and to promote council programs so members have something to do. Uh, we want to educate councils about current and future programs. As, as I, we just mentioned, not everybody's reading emails and not everybody. So hopefully the district deputies are following up and poking to, you know, promote to leave no neighbor behind and wheelchairs and the basketball and soccer challenges, etc. Uh, we want you to promote membership growth, encouraging councils, executive councils, um, specifically to find their replacements to, to, to recruit uh, their replacement plus one. Uh, we want to provide and ensure we're showing support for the Saskatchewan Charitable Foundation, you know, because uh, many, especially during these time of needs, uh, we know the request for, for support is coming in all the time. Uh, we want, as we go through the weekend, when we get to the end, we'll talk about a checklist. We want to identify and when able to assist councils in distress and uh, please provide an update to the state board as you find those struggling councils that are in serious need. And uh, if we haven't said it before, to promote membership growth, uh, to keep, want to keep our uh, field agents and the agency informed of all council activities. And we want to positively support the agency because we know uh, the agents are an important part of, of the Knights of Columbus. As we're addressing the uh, the councils and we're and addressing everyone, um, this is something that was identified that we a couple of years ago by uh, some past state deputies. We need to if we look at our councils. We need to promote a culture of leadership opportunities. This is at the state level, district deputy level, uh, program directors, chairmen, grand knights, you know, council executives, and even in like. The same applies to the fourth degrees. We, we know many uh, groups are struggling to find leadership. So we need to identify those men and encourage those new knights or those young knights or the senior knights, all, anyone. We want to encourage them to become active, to encourage them to take on new and old activities. Just to, again, we want to create the environment where we can help develop leaders, where people won't be criticized for failing, but will be commended for attempting to do something positive. And that's something we need to encourage with all. Um, as everyone knows, like once a person's done being a grand knight, it's, it's, I haven't heard it as much lately, but the second they're done being a grand knight, they kind of wash their hands and walk away. And that's something we need to address and we need to change that as an outgoing grand night yes needs to rest a little bit but we want to make sure that the incoming grand night doesn't feel totally overwhelmed and stressed so we want to foster a better more positive relationship in these councils and at district deputy levels state levels so uh just mentioned it before we want to encourage district deputies to find a district warden it uh kind of a term that's not the most popular, but it, it is something that uh, if you find one or two, maybe they will be the a future DD because we know some of our district deputies love to do this job, but there's an eight year limit. And uh, I know that's gonna disappoint many, but uh, after eight years, it, it's um, we can find something else for you to do. But uh, the, the, the councils need uh, some new energy and some different ideas. So, and the same thing for our program directors and chairman, we're gonna, as always, have encouraged them to have subcommittees because uh, the more people, um, you know, how do you need an elephant, right? One bite at a time. And the more people that are eating the element, the elephant will make it easier for everyone to be, for the task get done. So I'm still this from a program. Um, the best leaders lift people up rather than tear them down. And I'm hoping we don't have leaders like this. And uh, this becomes a level which we'd all love to attain 
Um, and I would just best summarize it as we do our best to be a leader. What did Jesus do? And I, I hope we can keep this in our thoughts as we try to lead our teams. want to recognize our general agent, worthy general agent, Brother Mark Lewins and his team have been fantastic supporters of, uh, of the Knights, strong recruiters, but have generally been a very positive influence within our, within our councils and our districts. And I just wanted to say thank you to him and his team for all of his support over the years. And just as a reminder, we, we all, you know, we're all working together. Uh, and we need to continue to work together during these COVID times. So uh, thank you to the agency and we'll continue to work together. Uh, touched on at the beginning, we want to, uh, Supreme is always, and, and rightfully so, in, more in the States, you'll see talk of the Hispanic growth of element. In Canada, we have a, a wide range, especially here in Saskatchewan. We have a wide range of, of communities that we want to welcome and encourage to be a part of, um, and our state uh, cultural diversity chairman, for the state treasurer Marty Nogot is, is the chairman. Um, as people know, we're working hard to continue to develop our relationships with the various communities. Um, you know, and these are all the ones I could just kind of lift with African, Chaldean, English, First Nations, French, Maiti, Polish, Spanish, Syro Malabar, Tagalog, Filipino, uh, Ukrainian, Vietnamese, and for those who weren't aware, is uh, effective in April. It'll be the 500th anniversary of Christianity in the Philippines. So as we're addressing our Filipino communities, uh, be aware of that so we can uh, help them celebrate. So, and as once times change, we'll, oh, yeah. we'll uh, recognize As we're inviting people to, to join the Knights, I encourage them all to join online. Uh, I mentioned this before, it's just, it's proven to be a, a great training and informational tool for the men joining the Knights. Uh, in years past, people joined the Knights. Uh, not everyone was mentored as thoroughly as others. So, and if they are, so by joining online, we can all be assured that everyone is receiving the information. Uh, uh, my son, when he joined back in January, what, January when he turned 18, I was able to kind of follow along and I found the emails from Supreme to be very inspiring, very inspirational. And uh, I kind of wish that every member of the Knights of Columbus could receive that information. Um, but it, it's just for the online information and hopefully there'll be something to consider in the future provided everyone were to sign up so start anyone you're considering joining the night invite them to join online just so you can share the information so they can receive that information and uh, for those who aren't aware anyone who does join online our uh, online chairman brother Abel sends them a welcoming email and we're working to invite them to uh, to become to become council active so everyone is hopefully everyone has seen the online exemplification uh, the one by supreme and actually since uh the summer saskatchewan has its own saskatchewan made combined exemplification video uh i know recently here in saskatoon the district deputies invited uh four new knights to do it to watch it over zoom uh which is an option and I uh, thought they did a very professional job. So after the meeting this weekend, if people have questions, we can explain to them how to organize and have people participate in the combined video. This um, training, Supreme continues to have monthly training uh, menus that they email out. Uh, this is over and above the uh, webinars, which they tend to have on the typical Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday nights. What we have found, just, just to say, is uh, Saskatchewan's attendance hasn't been as strong. I'm not sure if it's just 
because people forget, uh, aren't interested, which I'm hoping is not the case. Uh, we, we just want to help reinforce that a lot of these training sessions are, are they're meant to help make everyone better. And they're not just meant for the DDs or the grand knights. They're intended for every member who, who wants to learn to be a better member or learn more about the programs. Uh, so please encourage the grand knights to share these with their, with their executives and their, and their members. So, uh, also for training, we have our we have our past state deputy Bob Barkman, who is available to train really any council on a variety of topics. And uh, while we recognize that people do want to, people prefer the in-person training sessions. Uh, just just recognize that uh, with the COVID pandemic, uh, we have to deal with the virtual sessions. And uh, to also recognize that uh, Supreme sessions are becoming more interactive than the original webinar style. So please keep that in uh, your consideration. Do want to recognize the uh, Canada Cup for 2019-2020. Congratulations, hopefully I can get this set up on the screen. I'll leave it in the background for you. But I do want to recognize past state deputy Chris Bencharski, former state membership director Marty Nogat, and former state online director James Nesman, and everyone who recruited a single member because uh, combined efforts was uh, allowed Saskatchewan to continue on to uh, be the Canada Cup winner two years in a row. Key part for those who didn't know, we won by one new by one new night. That's how we beat Alberta. So it's single members add up. Identifying our goal for this year, just to remind everyone, our membership goal, our intake is 325, which is very easily achievable under any circumstances with a net 270 with an extra focus on recognized college members might be a little difficult. Uh, no one could plan for uh, for COVID to continue on, but we also want to expand our cultural diversity with uh, at least with an easy 100 new members. To recognize our numbers as of December 1st, our intake is 57 and our current net net is minus 153. So just to identify where we want to be and need to be, we should be at 163 of our intake and our positive numbers should be our net net. So we definitely have some work cut out for us. So identify, let's, I'd like to promote the free membership. And uh, we have our promo code. Everyone should be aware of this. I'm gonna scroll quickly through the Supreme Awards criteria for, because I know brother Eugene will be touching on the McGivney Awards. Not gonna to focus too many on the identifies. Membership success, I know Brother Dan will be touching on many of these during his report. Every now and then we hear the concept of membership, membership, membership. I put this in writing just because then somebody wants to hold me accountable to it. This is, this is the why. For the record, it's not about the numbers, aka the quota. I've heard many people talk about it. Everyone knows we need to recruit men for the various benefits what the Knights have to offer. You know, we want to give purpose to have men become better men, better Catholics, better husbands, better fathers. We want to recruit men to, with programs. We need to help men lead our councils to help replace those brother Knights who have retired and left us. So yes, we do need the numbers and high ones if we have plans to continue on as councils in order. But it's not about the numbers. It's about survival. So... The quota is just a pre is just a number that has been established over the years. To the reality is to barely break even, uh, and some years it's going to be higher, and some years it's going to be lower. The quota is technically just an average of what's needed for survival. So just so people are aware, so we can correct that stigma that happens at the council level. More of the wise. Everyone, I'll leave Brother Dan to expand on his, during his 
properties and the how. Bottom line, the how is simply asking our brother knights or our brothers and sons and grandsons to join the knights. So Founders Award, again, Brother Eugene will speak on the awards, but the key part here is if we're going to talk about fraternal benefit seminars, uh, the pressure is not all on the agency at the end of the year to, hey, they, uh, we didn't have enough fraternal benefits. Uh, we need to cur encourage the councils to reach out to the field agents, to the agency, to ask them to plan these, benef these fraternal benefit seminars. And we need to provide them with an audience. Uh, it, it, to plan them and have no one show up is, uh, doesn't properly recognize the time of the agencies. Um, so we want to maximize uh, the time of the agents and uh, and by all means they should be invited to to host them but we need to provide them with the audience and the fraternal benefits nights we, we know they're not just should they're not just limited to the members but you know we can invite our prospective prospective members um, just make sure we're keeping in contact with the agency just to with, with your field agents to make sure that uh, the opportunities can be there and, and uh, to advertise with our membership and, and our communities so they know what, uh, so they can participate and hopefully being energized to, to participate. So, Columbian Award, self-explanatory everyone, Star Council Award. Um, five key things which have never changed. Uh, McGivney Award, Founders Award, Columbian Award, submitting your forms. Uh, forms is a key part, and uh, the most important out of all of these is the safe environment compliance. We'll touch base on that a little bit, but that's not going away. I uh, don't think it's ever going to go away. Making sure our our membership is safe and the vulnerable within our programs are also being uh, paid attention to. Star District Award. Just a reminder for the district deputies of what's necessary. Faith and action programs, just to keep people aware. Uh, for a long time, we had the, was it 44 years, 48 years of the surge and service. And then we had uh, a change in direction, a very positive change in direction. It was building the domestic church. And uh, currently now we're the we are in year three of the faith in action and, and uh, the building of the domestic church is a sub-program of that. So want to identify some tools to succeed uh, at council level and as well at, at the district level. So prayer, leadership, planning, and reporting. Uh, prayer being first and want to identify to you and to the, and to the council because this is information that Supreme is one of the primary reasons why young men are joining the order today is to develop their relationship with God. And uh, we need, for a long time, we had such a focus on pancake breakfast, pancake breakfast, pancake breakfast. We, we need to, that was the reason for the change to the building the domestic church and to building faith in action. So we want to uh, develop on all four uh sets of programs so to help reinforce that with our councils leadership talked about that already we want to choose the right person for the job uh who's we want to make sure that their the role is is, is clear you know is clear to them and the ability to delegate to subcommittees and and to getting help and that we need to offer them support planning most important part is what we many of us fail to do is we fail to communicate with our pastor. So a lot of people aren't sure how to. So there's there's guides want to promote uh, councils meeting with their executive, not just the grand night, but the executive meeting with with their parish priests uh, and talking with them and working with them, not against. Because uh, we do hear of issues on occasion. We want to make sure we're selecting the right programs and the programs that are working and being supported by their councils 
by all members of the councils, not just specific groups. We want to make sure everyone is included to the best of our abilities. Planning in advance, you know, three, six, nine months out. Uh, it, it doesn't take long for, uh, I'm hoping this is we all kind of, I'm hoping this COVID does go away. And if we're not, if we don't have activities planned for next year at this time, um, scrambling at the last moment is, is not going to prove to be successful. So we need to make sure we're, we continue to plan in advance and we need to consider everyone who's involved. So reporting, I know also Brother Eugene will be talking on this and there'll be some changes coming down the line regarding this form. So please uh, encourage councils to continue reporting of their activities. ODR does not stand for outdoor rink. It stands for officer's deck desk reference. So at this point, I would actually ask if uh, district deputies are aware themselves don't have access to the uh, ODR or please uh, reach out to your grand knights, financial secretaries, make sure you also have, make sure they also have access to the, to the ODR, to their member management system. Uh, it's never too late to, to find out. I do know that Past years, normally January 1, if an officer hasn't been properly recorded on the, the 185 or 365, they've been removed. So please be aware of, 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 that, info, of that possibility. And the officer's desk, desk reference does list a lot of information. Uh, there's these 10, and if you ever go into the program, there is a wide range of material which can be shared. Uh, which good source of information for council advocates as well as our state advocates uh, and district deputies in general, just so you're aware of, of issues to prevent things from getting worse than they need to be. Safe environment program. Again, I know worthy state advocate Greg will be touching on this later today or tomorrow morning. Um, uh, to uh, just to identify skip slowly. one key thing I wanted to identify is as of let's say July 1st every council was encouraged to make sure their form 185 and 365s were completed and if you look about it to a state and a star council, we needed to make sure that those members had met, uh, had been appointed and it started their training. Change here. What we are aware of is probably around um, the middle, the beginning to middle of October, many councils, uh, Many members will have been receiving letters from Supreme that being they had not completed their uh, specific training as required as the Grand Knight Program Director, Family Director, Community Director, Supreme will remove them from their position, which is on the 365. And everybody is actually removed except for the Grand Knight because he's been elected. But the other three have officially been removed. Uh, and it is the requirement of the council to reappoint them. And we want to remind them that by taking on that position, they must remember the obligation that with that job comes a requirement of doing the online safe environment program. Uh, and again, it'll have to be done in 45 days. And if, if they don't, it'll be, it's going to become a, a cyclical remove, reappoint. So just encourage them to get it done properly and as soon as possible. It is for the betterment of the order and it is the betterment of the church. Just a quick heads up for those who have taken this before, there's the leaders option. For everyone else, this would be, if you have an incoming grand night, as, as we get into uh, April and May, if, if there's going to be a change of officers, I would encourage them to do the one on the right, the blue one, 
uh, but to also recognize that after July 1st, more than likely they're going to have to take the leader's version. Uh, this, uh, the information may be the same, but the system does not record it as the same. So. Social media. As we continue to learn through this COVID that there's many, many challenges in our, uh, definitely many challenges. Um, and if our councils and our state and our district deputies don't adapt sooner or later, uh, we're going to have continued uh, communication challenges. So kind of doing a little bit of research, you know, everybody has a phone, everybody knows what texts, emails, websites, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Snapchat. But I'd be willing to bet that uh, most people use three to four of these on a semi-regular basis and uh, be willing to, to bet that a uh, few of these apps, many people have never heard of. So, uh, But I want to identify that our membership is diverse and growing and our members' communication methods are different for each generation. And just the challenge, are we reach, reaching everyone? So it'll be an ongoing challenge that the state has and I, I will be looking for help from district deputies and councils to, with the goal of communicating with every council executive and member. So my final challenge to everyone is to invite a man to join the order, whether it be a, a grandson, a brother-in-law, father depending on on the on the family uh neighbor's kid it uh now is the best time it, it's a free opportunity to join the knights of columbus we have the free promo code based on the beatification of father mcgivney uh and that does this offer does expire on december 31st at 10 p.m saskatchewan time so there is the window is closing this this offer has been available off and on since august so we do want to invite everyone to to a challenge, um, to encourage someone to join. Uh, an ongoing challenge that we have been making is we want to encourage every council executive to recruit at least one new man, one new member. And I'm willing to make a promise that if every council officer did recruit one new member before Christmas, I would stop mentioning membership until June 30th. And I put my hand up, uh, but we need every council officer to do so. So to wrap up my pro, my uh, brief presentation, we can let other people talk because I'm sure they'd rather hear other people talk. Um, I want to say thank you for, for being part of the team. Thank you for doing everything you've done so far and will continue to do. Uh, and I do appreciate the effort. So, and I really wish we could be doing this in person because doing this from a screen is not as energetic as I'd hoped it would be. So thank you, Bishop. <laughs> We have. I'm still waiting for my second computer. I want to get a second screen. I want to end up. I want to be like Peter Folk, who's got two and three screens going, and the man does magic things. And and Glenn. So someday we will figure out a way to be twice as energetic. A couple other things before I bring up the Supreme Night address. I do have a video. I just want to identify. Um, as I have in the agenda, on December 17th, to make councils aware, is uh, Supreme did a survey. They reached out to, and Brother Alain Ryan can correct me later, but I want to say it was 34,000 people. Um, and they recognized that councils' meetings are long and inconsistent, and they recognized to recognize members' times that they wanted to streamline the meetings. So I'm not going to share all the information, but I would simply encourage, uh, based on the email that came out by Supreme on December 2nd, nicknamed uh, Guidelines for Council Meetings 10318, I'd encourage you and encourage you to invite your councils to attend the webinar on December 17th. Wow. Really, he's take deputy Joe. Yes. I think, I think Bishop Ryan had a question. He has his hand up. 
I, I don't want to disrupt the, the flow of the agenda. Uh, just a comment. Um, what we do, because I do sometimes 12 hours of uh, uh, these Zooms a day. Um, if, if you open up your chat on the bottom, on the right-hand side, you can have a continual flow of comment or, uh, you know, uh, encouragement or things of that nature to the speaker, uh, possible questions that others might have. And, and uh, if, if uh, one of the people that you want to appoint, Joe, you could follow those chat comments. There might be a question of clarification. There could be whatever. So I'm thinking this might be uh, helpful in the upcoming reports so that, uh, you know, people can be acknowledged by simply typing in a question or a chat, a comment or something of that nature, just a, just a practical thing moving forward with the reports that are coming up. No, oh, thank you. Um... My state advocate, Brother Greg, if you could uh, pay attention to that, as well as uh, the state warden, just just keep me apprised of that. That'd be greatly appreciated. This time, I'm going to leave my screen and uh, go like this. Play our message from our worthy Supreme Knight, Carl Anderson. Hopefully this My brother Knights, we meet today during the most extraordinary year in the history of the Knights of Columbus since our founding in 1882. We continue to confront with fortitude the challenge of a global pandemic that in less than a year has killed more than one million people. In the midst of such tragedy, we have celebrated the beatification of our founder, who himself was a victim of a coronavirus pandemic in 1890. Blessed Michael McGivney, now close to the final step in the process of canonization, is even a greater inspiration to us and to other Catholics throughout the world. We know that the process of canonization is not undertaken for the good of the candidate. We are sure of Father McGivney's holiness and his place in the house of the Father. We understand that the holiness and example of Father McGivney is today being lifted up for our good as the Knights of Columbus and for the good of Catholics everywhere the Knights of Columbus is present. Today, our good work circles the globe stretching from North America to Europe, Africa, the Middle East, Asia, and the Pacific. Father McGivney's great achievement was to find a practical means to strengthen his center, that is, his own parish community, while extending a Catholic influence into the well-established and often hostile periphery of the larger American society. And in founding the Knights of Columbus, he opened a practical path for millions of men to follow him in living a life of charity and brotherhood. He called his brother knights to live a life of charity, according to the admonition of St. Paul. Love one another with a brotherly affection, and do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. In this way, Father McGivney anticipated by nearly a century the Second Vatican Council's call for the laity to transform society by the light of the gospel. Today in America and in many other countries in which the order is active, we experience deep divisions in society and social evils similar to those faced by Father McGivney, grinding poverty, prejudice, violence, and alienation. Father McGivney's vision of a brotherhood of Catholic men who bring into their families, their parishes, and their communities a new sense of charity and social fraternity is needed as much today as during Father McGivney's life. This is another reason why I believe Father McGivney has been beatified, to propose to our fellow Catholics that his life, holiness, and vision are an example to follow. And yes, I would say also that his beatification 
is an encouragement to our fellow Catholics to join the Knights of Columbus in the great work of charity and unity. We know that Father McGivney died during the pandemic of 1890. Some have suggested Blessed Michael McGivney be regarded as a patron in time of pandemic for the millions sick with the coronavirus. In this, we can all see the hand of providence. Once again, we can see another dimension as well. The coronavirus pandemic has spread suffering and death to millions. Its effect on our church has also been dramatic. Some predict it may advance the secularization of Europe by a decade and may diminish mass attendance by as much as 25%. These predictions follow the steady, decades-long decline in sacramental practice by Catholics throughout Europe and North America. Although time does not permit a country-by-country -country review, the situation in the United States provides a disturbing example of the extent of the problem. Since 1970, the United States has experienced a steep decline in virtually all categories. Two trends are especially important. The number of infant baptisms has gone from more than 1 million per year to less than 600,000, and sacramental marriages have fallen even more sharply, from more than 400,000 per year to less than 150,000. Today in the United States, the fastest rising category is the most disturbing. Adults who were raised Catholic, but who now no longer identify as Catholic. They have gone from 3.5 million in 1970 to nearly 30 million. Now, the clergy abuse scandal certainly contributes to this crisis. But the fact that these trends preceded these scandals by decades suggest other reasons for the decline. We know that in establishing the Knights of Columbus, Father McGivney sought to keep the men and families of his parish firm in their Catholic faith. In other words, he wanted to keep them Catholic. He was a shepherd who sought to keep his flock within the fold. He wanted to keep men from joining secret societies, many of which were anti-Catholic. That was one of the great dangers of his day. The other great danger was the threat to widows who were unable to prove they could financially support their children, and thereby they risked having them taken away by the state and placed in institutions that were often anti-Catholic. The Knights of Columbus was his answer to both these dangers and the early popularity of the order reflected just how effective the order was in answering these needs. Today, we once again see many Catholics leaving our church and many others being unable to participate in mass and the sacraments as a result of the pandemic. In recent years, many dioceses have responded to the increasing number of lapsed Catholics with programs encouraging them to come back home. These programs, are good and will be needed in the future more than ever. But there is a better way for the long term, and that better way is to follow the example of Father McGivney. Let us work to keep our fellow Catholics from leaving in the first place. And I think that the best way to do that is to get them active in the Knights of Columbus. Now, we may all know someone who has left the church, but I do not know of a single case where an active brother knight has done so. What Father McGivney's beatification tells us is that membership in the Knights of Columbus is a providential way to live the Catholic faith today. And by living our faith, we soon have a living faith. Our Catholic Church faces a severe crisis. It has been gradually building for decades, but with the pandemic, it has now reached a new level. The situation today requires the renewal of our parish communities, and that in turn requires a re-examination of our approach to parish ministry. Let me be very clear about this point. A parish-based council of the Knights of Columbus is not a parish ministry. That was never Father McGivney's intention in 1882, and it is not our intention today. For many years, we have encouraged the formation of parish-based councils. 
These councils can support our pastors in their ministry. They can strengthen our parishes by encouraging more families to participate in the sacramental life of our parishes. They can help our parishes be places where the gospel is lived more fully and the practice of charity is a greater reality. And we will do all this by our witness. Like blessed Michael McGivney, parish priests today need to adopt a missionary attitude toward their own parish. And like blessed Michael McGivney, focus on evangelization directed toward keeping their parishioners within the church, as well as getting greater cooperation with lay organizations such as the Knights of Columbus. Reversing these trends will be an enormous task that will require clergy and laity working together. In fact, it will require all of us putting our shoulder to the wheel in the days ahead. We must all, like Father McGivney, have a missionary attitude. Blessed Michael McGivney did not simply start a new fraternal organization. Instead, he showed us a new way to live the witness of a Christian life through a brotherhood devoted to charity and unity, and in this way, to grow stronger in the faith. St. John Paul II reminds us, the first form of witness is the very life of the missionary, of the Christian family, and the ecclesial community. That is the Knights of Columbus today, and it can be even more so tomorrow. If we take up this challenge, then we can help lead a true renewal of our parishes and of our church in the days ahead. I would like to recall some things I mentioned during my report to the Supreme Convention last August. I know you will agree with me that the Knights of Columbus is something very special. Our unique character can be found in three words, charity, unity, and fraternity words that express three of the most important dimensions of our lives. It would not be too much to say that these three words put the human in human existence. In 2018, we began a three-year cycle to more fully understand and live these principles. When the Supreme Council met in Baltimore in 2018, we met under the banner, Knights of Columbus, Knights of Charity. Then last year in Minneapolis, our theme was Knights of Columbus, Knights of Unity. And earlier this year, when we met virtually, our theme was Knights of Columbus, Knights of Fraternity. During these three years, we came to better understand how our principles of charity, unity, and fraternity combined to offer us the opportunity to live more fully the Christian life. That was one reason we introduced the new combined exemplification of charity, unity, and fraternity. We know that the Knights of Columbus is much more than a service organization. Our dedication to charity and unity is exemplary, but what really sets us apart is our commitment to fraternity. It is our fraternal approach to charity and our fraternal approach to unity that makes us so different from other charitable organizations. And it is our fraternal approach to insurance by Brother Knights, for Brother Knights, that sets us apart from ordinary life insurers. In Evangelii Gaudium, Pope Francis writes, I especially ask Christians to offer a radiant and attractive witness of fraternal communion. Let everyone admire how you care for one another and how you encourage and accompany one another. What we should understand from these words is that Pope Francis sees fraternal communion as one of the keys to renewal of our church. As you know, as Supreme Knight, I have met with our Holy Father privately on many occasions. And on this occasion, I want to tell you that when he says, I especially ask Christians to offer an attractive witness of fraternal communion, I am convinced he really means it. And what's more, I believe he looks to us for that witness. My brother Knights, living in fraternity is what we do every day in a thousand different ways in Knights of Columbus councils throughout the world. It is this commitment to fraternity that gives us the fraternal strength to do the work of charity our times demand. It is our special difference. 
In the two decades that I have served as Supreme Knight, I have come to believe that it is our fraternal strength that is the distinctive hallmark of the Knights of Columbus. Our charity is so different than ordinary philanthropy. We are not about the idea, as good as it is, of looking at the end of the month or at the end of the year and seeing whether there is a little surplus left over in our accounts that we could use for philanthropy. Fraternal charity is something different. When a member of the family is in trouble and one brother reaches out to help another brother, or a father helps a son, or a mother helps a daughter, do we consider that to be charity? Or is it something else? Fraternal charity lifts our relationship with others to a higher level, to a Christian level. It arises from a spirit of gratitude for the gifts the Lord has given to each of us and that we in turn share with others. It is this spirit that sets apart Christian charity and it is this spirit that sets apart the Knights of Columbus. I have mentioned several reasons why I believe that the beatification of Father McGivney this year is a providential sign given at this time in history for the good of the church and society. And I would like to mention two more reasons. First, for the past two decades, our church has been terribly wounded by the painful events that have come to light in regard to clergy abuse. We continue to pray for healing of the victims, reconciliation, and renewal. Perhaps more than ever before, we need the example of a holy parish priest, one who was devoted to the welfare of his parishioners and who was known during his lifetime for his humility and holiness to be lifted up as a model for today's young men who are now studying in our seminaries or who are considering a vocation to the priesthood. We need the example of a holy parish priest to be lifted up today for the benefit of the thousands of dedicated priests who are devoting their lives to parish ministry. The beatification of Father McGivney is a providential sign to them. I ask you to make promotion of vocations a priority in every jurisdiction and to do so through the intercession of Father McGivney. May blessed Michael McGivney be a blessing and example to every man considering a vocation to the priesthood as well as to every priest. Second, we must all prayerfully reflect on the meaning for us as leaders of the Knights of Columbus, on the details of the miracle attributed to the intercession of Father McGivney. I mean in particular the fact that the miracle occurred within a Knights of Columbus family, where the Father is one of our successful insurance agents, that the miracle occurred in a child before his birth, that both the life-threatening condition and its healing was discovered by ultrasound technology, that the physicians recommended abortion as an answer, and that today the child is healthy and beautiful. Do we not see in all these circumstances the hand of providence encouraging the work and the mission of the Knights of Columbus? Some may see this miracle as an extraordinary way for providence to say to us, well done, good and faithful servants. But for me, it sends another signal. The work of the Knights of Columbus is needed today, now more than ever. Now is the time to do even more, to reach even higher, and to bring even more men into our ranks. My brother Knights, I have sought in these remarks to give you a sense of why I believe the beatification of our founder is a providential sign of the importance of the Knights of Columbus to our church, and our society, and why it is that the life and holiness of Blessed Michael McGivney is so important to the lives of each one of us, individually and for the Knights of Columbus as an organization. As you participate in the upcoming sessions of our meeting, I ask that you keep in mind these considerations. The beatification of Father Michael McGivney has lifted the Knights of Columbus to a new level. Now in the light of his shining example, let us write the next glorious page of our history. May blessed Michael McGivney pray for us. Viva Jesus.
If we were in his presence, we'd all be giving him a, a loud uh, round of applause. But uh, that's what uh, Alain would reflect. It's just, it's hard. I recognize it's hard when we're virtual. At this time, I, uh, I would like to welcome again and introduce our Supreme Representative, Brother Alain Caillé, the Territorial Growth Director for Canada, to give his opening remarks. And I'll just kind of inter um, give you a hopefully a brief summary of of how he has come to be where he is. So, Brother Alain joined the order in uh, 1988, age of 18. He's uh, held most council officer positions. Um, he was a Grand Knight in 1999 to 2001 and reserved in 2003 to 2004. He's a former district deputy. He was elected as state warden in 2008 and then became state advocate in 10, state treasurer in 2011, state secretary in 13, and was elected the state deputy of Ontario from 2015 to 17. And he achieved a circle of honor for 2016-17 at 103%, which is the first time for Ontario in 16 years. So recognize uh, the, the strength it takes to get there after that long. So in January of 2018, he became the Supreme MPC, which is Membership Programs Consultant Coordinator for Ontario and Quebec. In January 2019, became the uh, Regional Growth Director for Quebec and New Brunswick. And this past July 2020, became the Territorial Growth Director for Canada. So I'd like to please give him a warm Saskatchewan welcome, uh, Brother Alain Caillé. I can hear you, just it's very slow. Very slow. One moment, Alain. Just brother Alain. Brother Alain, can you can you hear us? We uh, your sound is all muffled up. There's some difficulty with your sound, brother Alain. Hello. Let's see what happens here. Your screen is moving at the proper speed, but the voice is moving at a very slow speed. So what it is like so what we have done is get him to phone you and then you can put him on speakerphone and we can all hear him. I'm going to did you hear Joe, that just, he can, just see if he can re-sign in. Okay. If he leaves the zoom and goes back in. Let's see what happens here. I do. We'll just say for the rest of people, if they find their their screen is reacting really slow, maybe just turn off the video feed. Um, as much as I do appreciate seeing people uh, and knowing they're not sleeping, uh, just if if there's any problems, please 
uh, that might help with your playback speeds coming. Just, we want to make sure the information is going to you. Uh, with Did Alan sign off? Yeah, I landed side off, and I'm hoping he's gonna he's gonna try and get right back in. Just gotta love computers, right? As long as he signed off, because if if the uh, moderator takes him off, then you can't get him back on. No, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I'm not kicking him out. I didn't. <laughs> no, mine, sure. mine, was doing, mine was doing the same thing, and I just went out and re-signed back in. It, uh... And Sean's taking a break. <laughs> There's Saskatoon. <laughs> thank you thank you a little bit of snow beautiful sunshine like normal love the shirt hey <laughs> i worked hard to find out this morning thank hey, appreciate it i like your new haircut there sean <laughs> which hair i guess which one thin is in cut, i only had to cut three I really hope we didn't lose our supreme representative because I'm going to get it for that. I didn't kick him out. There's Buck. No, it's uh, not sure why we get uh, slower speed. Alan, can you phone Joe and then he can put the phone to the computer? Phone Joe. There was a call in number. I'm hoping the call in number. No, just call your phone. If he phones your cell phone, then you can put this to your thing and it works. The joys of technology. <laughs> I'm going to put you on. Hopefully, this works. Wait, one sec here. Uh, just a speaker. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Can you, is this better? Can you hear me? I'm going to do people yeah. a thumbs up on the screen. So I'm just going to hold this right here. All right. As long as it works, I'm good to go. I see I thumbs can... up on the screen. All right. Perfect. I'll start up again. Sorry about that, gentlemen. So. <clears throat> Worthy State Deputy Brother Joe, Worthy State Chaplain Father Ed, Your Excellency Bishop Ryan, Worthy State Board Officers, Worthy Directors and Chairman, Worthy District Deputies, and possibly some ladies by your side. Thank you so kindly for your kind introduction. I bring you this morning greetings from our Supreme Direct, our Supreme Knight Carl Anderson and all the Supreme Directors. It is quite a privilege for me to be with you during your mid-year meeting as your Supreme Representative. Hope all of you and your families are staying well and safe in this time of COVID. On many occasions, I was invited to come to Saskatchewan, but never did. From my first visit, I was hoping to be in person, but considering the circumstances, this will do just fine. would like to say, take a minute to say hello to uh, two past state deputies, uh, past state deputy Dennis and his wife Connie, and past state deputy Brian and his wife Dolores, two past state deputies which I had worked with, kind of, while I was also state deputy in Ontario. 
and also would like to recognize Pat State Deputy uh, Chris and his wife Pat, who I've also worked when I started to work with Supreme. This meeting is one of the most important meetings of the year, as you, as district deputies, are critically important to the success of our order. Your leadership, particularly during this time of pandemic, is more important than ever. Thank you very much for your leadership. It's more important than ever at this time. Your ability to teach, train, inspire, and motivate your council leadership teams is key to success for the council, state, and supreme in achieving our goals. It's critically, critically important to know your council's very if your council's health is very well, be able to identify and resolve issues. Are they healthy? Are they active? What could be done differently? Do they utilize the Leave No Neighbor Behind initiative? Are they reaching out to help others? Please make it a priority to communicate with your council leaders regularly. Emails are great, but not always efficient. Why do I ask? Well, do you know if they get them or do they even read them? And if they do, how confident are you that they share it with their members? Communication starts with us. We need to show the way or, le or lead by example, if you wish. Here is a disappointing note from our constant contact open rate. Does anyone here know which officer in the order who is less often open their emails from Supreme? Is it the state deputy? Well, I, I hope not. Is it the state officers? Is it your, is it your district deputies? Is it yourselves? How about your brand nights? Or what about the program director, membership director, or even the council officers? It's sad to report that the right answer is the brand night. And this is at an open rate of 21%. 21% open rate from the brand nights. Not to, not to share this email rates, just to open them. If you only communicate with them by emails, I would strongly recommend to give them a call and ask them to repeat some of the last emails you have sent them and see if they are aware of its contents. Make them accountable. Hold monthly calls with all top council officers to address issues and share best practices. Show them what they can and how to do it. Ask each council to assess progress against their strategy action plan and make necessary adjustments. As always, share best practices regularly among the council in your district that you would get from your state board officers, directors, without forgetting your Supreme team. Encourage every brother Knight to review the recent produced Blessed McGivney document and witness for the world video. Promote showing these videos at council meetings. With the, beatific with the beatification of Blessed Michael McGivney, Supreme has and will continue to celebrate this great achievement for the next current year. As of today, the order is down by 19% compared to where we were last year on the same day in recruiting. Our Southern brothers in the United States, they are down 19% from last year. Taking a closer look at home now, Canada, we're 5% behind where we were last year. That's approximately 150 members Canada-wide. But now for Saskatchewan, we need to be honest about the situation. Last year, at this same time, Saskatchewan was positioned in position 17 in the order with 117 new members for 36% of quota. And now this year, it's a little different as you are in position 67, 61st versus 17, with 57 new members compared to 117 last year. And finally, this represents 17% of the state quota in comparison of 36. This is sadly 48% of what was done last year. No one can tell your state deputy and state court that the well is dry. No one can utilize, can utilize the excuse that the COVID has made people want to join the order. Saskatchewan has earned, yes, earned the circle of honor four of your last six years. What is needed is a little bit of will. To understand more, which piece of the puzzle could be missing, I could reference some at this time. 
maybe tired, sick, scared, maybe even passed away. That's a good excuse. Taking care of their sick parents or maybe training. What? Training? Really? Gentlemen, for those who are retired and for some of us who are still working, very often our supervisors will ask us or tell us that we need to take training so that we may be better at what we do in our job. God knows, my boss asked me to take two trainings this past week. Where I want to go with this is since COVID started back in March, many members and councils have decided to stop everything. And it, <clears throat> to stop everything is done back until it's back up in norm, to normal. Will that ever happen? Funny how some councils and members have taken the opportunity to try to stay active by having programs, recruiting at church drive, and all of this while respecting local and provincial restrictions. We, your RGDD up until the end of June, and Ryan, now your new RGD since July 1st, along with Sean, your regional training director, have been offering live training using GoToMeeting platform and now introducing the GoToWebinar so that we can help training all while your members can attend via their home on their laptop, computer, tablet, or telephone. Since July 1st, I have introduced for all Canadian jurisdictions the Canadian Training Menu, a perfect tool that offers different training subjects at different dates, different times of the day by different trainers across Canada. The only thing missing are your council members and officers. The members who do not come usually always come back for more, even if it's the same subject. We have our ticket holders, the people that come all the time. They never miss a training. Most of them are successful because they are well equipped. We ask them, are you still learning even if you're coming to the same training over and over again? And they tell us yes. When we are done this weekend and you are invited for your district meeting, will you promote this menu to your grand night and your councils? Let's talk about key areas to focus for the second half for success in this fraternal year. We need to get all councils in your district recruiting active. So far, 54 councils have submitted their 365. 98 of them have, have filed their 185, and 50% of your councils in Saskatchewan have completed their semi-annual audits. Let's take a look at safe environment compliance. We've already mentioned it was low. Out of 153 council, there's 71 grand knights who have completed their course. That's 50%. You know, 37 program directors, it's even, it's, it's about 25%. And then we go even lower with the community director at 25 and the family director at, with 21. We have to get every council in your, in your district implementing faith and action and leave no neighbor, leave no neighbor behind program in person and virtually, which we'll see a little bit on this weekend. We need to promote aggressively our free online membership offer using McGivney 2020 promotional code so till the end of December. Let's elaborate here for a moment to understand that if we utilize this initiative a little, your council, your district, and your state board will find success. If we ask to recruit, if we ask to recruit now, Many will tell us we are crazy because we can't go out for an activity or church run. How can we recruit? On November 24th of this year, a memo from Supreme came out under my signature to all officers across Canada, challenging you to recruit one family member before Christmas. This plan is simple. Most of us, if not all of us, will be contacting a family member before Christmas, wishing them a Merry Christmas. I'm sure that every family has someone who is not a knight yet. My son-in-laws are not, and this Christmas, they will be. While, ta while talking with our loved ones, why not ask them to become a knight before Christmas? Online. Become an A-member, and this would be on a trial for one year. The best part is free. They can see what it's like to be a knight of Columbus for one year for free. Then... It would be left to 
to our council to communicate with them to transfer them into a council so that we don't lose them next year. If a council with 15 officers recruits one new member, that would mean you would have a council would get 15 new members in a year or later, depending when they go through the ceremonial. It's simple. All right. So let's continue. Make it a priority to form at least one live or virtual exemplification team in each of your district and schedule and promote regular degrees. I want, by the way, to congratulate Saskatchewan State Team for organizing a live degree that they recorded and that you can use. We need to continue to promote our supreme monthly online virtual exemplification on scheduled dates or on demand. They are in English, Spanish, and French. We need to identify council training needs. Get them what they need. Lean on your regional training directors, Sean, or even Pierre and Francis from Quebec, Wayne or Denis from Ontario. And also your regional growth director, Brother Ryan, is there for your for support. We need to we need to hold our council officers accountable. We need to work with your councils to schedule spring church drives and fraternal benefit nights. Promote in the parish and invite family members to attend. Ensure that all councils view the McGivney documentary documentary witness to the world, which is a great tool. Encourage council to show the Supreme Convention highlights video and enter into the breach videos at virtual meetings, council events, and fraternal benefit nights. And finally, if we were to ask you this question, if we assigned a professional recruiter to each of your district, do you think that they could recruit enough members to make your district successful? Well, we already have these recruiters for you. They are called field agents. They would even bring these candidates to your degrees. So gentlemen, we need to start building bridges between our councils and our field force. We have to work hand in hand. It's the only way we can succeed after what we are going through right now. <clears throat> so this year so far, 33 members were brought in by councils and 24 by, by field agents. This is 42% of what the province has recruited. They will also help us organize and give us and give you credits for the two fraternal benefit nights needed to obtain the Founders Award. So far, zero fraternal benefit nights have been reported yet in Saskatchewan. None. So in closing, Thank you for your leadership and everything that you do for the Knights of Columbus. This will be a very informative meeting, so please take note and then put these ideas in action. Now, that you can always count on your Supreme for support as what you need. On this, have a good meeting. Viva users. Thank you. I'm going to hang up in you now. Don't mean to be rude. Thank you, Worthy Supreme Territorial Growth Director LA. Um, we'll, we'll figure out these technology things and we'll, we'll do this after. Um, he did a little bit better. <laughs> no, I just, yeah, we'll, we'll sort these things out. Um, I just wanted to, a uh, couple minutes out of schedule, but it doesn't bother me. I just, I know Bishop Brian can't spend uh, the whole day with us because running two eparchies pretty much uh, east and western Canada it seems to be. I did know if you wanted a couple of minutes Bishop Ryan to address the group before you needed to to, uh, to excuse I yourself. Would, I would welcome that. Sure. Um, not a lot of people uh, look at it this way that are knights but uh, you are important your family as one who demonstrates forgiveness. Uh, you could be, quote unquote, one of the very important confessors in your family's life. Uh, I've spoken to a lot of clergy and uh, used words from the Holy Father to encourage 
them to be better uh, confessors in their parishes. Uh, but I, I, I make some of these comments and apply them to you as knights in your homes. Um, closeness comes from confession. It's, it's about vulnerability. It's about courage and vulnerability. And, and those are some of the qualities that knights have. Reflect on this uh, by considering a passage in The Woman Caught in Adultery. It's clear that uh, there was closeness because the truths of Jesus always approach and can be spoken face to face. The Holy Father reminds us, looking the other in the eye like the Lord who after kneeling next to the adulteress about to be stoned, stood up and said to her, nor do I condemn you. This is not to go against the law. We too can add and go and sin no more. So not with the legalistic tone, of course, of, you know, demand and, and punishment as a definition, but the tone of those who feel that they have to determine the parameters of divine mercy. On the contrary, those words need to be spoken with a tone of truth and fidelity and love and mercy to enable the sinner to look ahead and not behind, to name the person that you're speaking to and say, I forgive you with, with words of hope, a tone of hope. And why, do I, why do I start with that? It's about becoming holy yourself. To be one who forgives one must know what it means to be forgiven. So you're not trying to just, you know, act that out, but it's going to come and overflow from your sense of being forgiven by God. Each night should go and confess regularly, and not just once or twice a year. I'd like to remind people that you should take better care of your soul than you do of your vehicle's engine. Uh, you, you change oil, what? three at least, probably four or five times a year in your vehicle. And each time you look at the sticker in the corner of your window, be reminded that it's time to go to confession as well. This calls for setting personal guide goals. Uh, in many cases, if you don't reach a spiritual goal of growing, growing closer to Christ and becoming Christ for others, because we don't set these conscientious goals, then then there's no way of measuring things and there's no uh, keeping yourself honest, as it were. Setting goals of either reading scripture daily or uh, attending a mass three or four times a week, even online, uh, praying a rosary or certainly leading the rosary in your family or leading the rosary in a car when you're traveling with somebody, uh, speaking to your teens about your personal struggles. Often with teens, it's about showing them that you're vulnerable and share with them so that they can experience your closeness and vulnerability. These are spiritual treasures that you can set, which will be appropriate for you in your situation. And as you find that in most cases, you can't always reach those spiritual goals, you definitely have something concrete to confess to God. And maybe, you know, end up using your, your free time uh, by not wasting it on TV or, you know, even an addiction. Find the joy of reconciliation with God. Lead those in your family to discover this joy of reconciliation with God and others. And when you do that, you will be a sign of God's mercy. So uh, bring yourself closer to Christ. Set some goals ask for grace, see yourself as a sinner, see yourself in God's mercy, and you will be able to, through the overflow of that joy and mercy, uh, be mercy and be Christ for others. So that's just a little uh, thing to reflect on, and uh, I leave that with you. Thank you so much, Holy State Deputy Joe, for uh, giving me those moments. Since he's away from his desk, I'm going to continue until he comes back. <laughs>
Uh, if 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 uh, Supreme Director Emma has has inspired me, it's don't waste any time. <laughs> um, I, I spoke once upon a go a uh, time ago in in the uh, spiritual enrichment weekend that we had uh, about post-it notes. Again, it's a simple little thing. Write down your little prayer. God, what do you want me to do today? God, who am I supposed to forgive today? Just write, uh, you know, five, six words on a post-it note. Stick them on your mirror in your bathroom. Stick it on a cupboard. Stick it anywhere in your home. Others get to see it. They know what you're praying. They know how you're interceding. It encourages them to do the same. And now we're back. So thank you, Lady State Secretary Joe, for giving me these moments to, to speak. Well, appreciate it very much. Um, at this time, we'll take a uh, a ten minute break. Um, not just, I'm, I think there's well, the only other smoker smoke them that you got him has been walking around. Um, yeah, we'll just take ten minutes, and uh, after the coffee, we'll. I'll be inviting uh, our Worthy State Membership Director, Dan Devers, and his team to uh, deliver your message or your messages. Uh, I will do my best to get, uh... Dan, do you need your list posted or are you just reading, sharing your message? Uh, I think I'm fine. I'm gonna share, uh, Just I'll just share my message and uh, then some of the ideas I'll send off to uh, have it posted on our website after uh, after today's meeting. I did write some more uh, last night and the night before. Okay, and I'll make sure I've got uh, Chris's at that time. So we'll uh, pause here for about nine minutes and uh, then we'll get this thing going. Hopefully, Bishop Brian, you have, uh, I know you've got plenty more meetings, so thank you very much and pop in whenever you wish. So you, you... Um, I'm hosting a bunch of things in the Epiphany today. So uh, one of them is a, an online thing for four hours. So sorry, but thank you. Thank you. So we'll pause here. Uh, Brother Joe.
No one's sleeping yet? I love the background that uh, Brother Peter has. I can't, I have to sit so close to get the Knights of Columbus in the background that I, it's uncomfortable to sit at the computer like that, exactly. So, the powers of Zoom. Okay.
time is 1050 we'll keep this like to keep this going um just before i turn it before i introduce our uh membership team um at 12 o'clock we'll pause for lunch i'll ask uh father ed to leave us in grace and you know we'll go for lunch but over lunch um around quarter after 12 i'm going to resume the meeting just just to zoom i'll reactivate it so if people want to come on um i want to make sure i read this properly is um during the state deputy midterm meeting um supreme played uh a, a simply fantastic video and it's called a witness for the world the Glo global impact of blessed michael mcgivney and it's about a 30 minute video so if i get my things organized properly from quarter after 12 till we start a quarter one um, if you come on, you might see uh, this video playing. It's available on YouTube. I'll make sure we share the link with everyone afterwards. It, it could be something councils play virtually, uh, played for their members, and they could watch it on their own. But it's it's uh, it, it's 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 a fantastic video, and I would encourage all of you to watch it. Um, and, and 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 seriously, if you get time over the Christmas break, uh, please please take the time to watch it. It's it's a fantastic video. But uh, just so you know, when you come on over lunch, if you have to see a video playing, that's uh, that's the name of the video. And like I say, I'll share it with you afterwards. So at this time, I uh, would like to turn things over to our state membership director, Dan Devers at Regina and his team. Um, we know with COVID, uh, there's a lot of, we're, the nights in Saskatchewan were very hands-on. Like over the years, we're, we're known for doing pancake breakfasts and, and, and everything. And right now we're facing challenges. Uh, we're used to doing podium speeches and, and shaking hands and rubbing elbows and uh, showing publicly what we're doing. And uh, right now we know that's a challenge. So uh, I'll turn it over to uh, Brother Dan and his team to, uh, to make their presentations and hopefully find ways to help motivate the councils to start getting recruitment active. So brother Dan, I, uh, turn thank it you. Uh, thank you. Worthy state deputy Joe, Worthy state chaplains, father Ed, and father Brian, Bishop Brian, Worthy state Joe, state deputy Joe and the state membership team, as well as uh, past state teams, Supreme uh, representatives and brother Knights. I'm going to try to follow this program the way the book is laid out. So we'll follow that. And after uh, the cultural diversity chairman, Marty, we'll have uh, the round table, Al Dion, and also uh, we'll have Brother Greg uh, speak on the Father McGivney uh, Guild. So it's hard to believe that we're already almost through 2020 and heading into 2021 for the second half of our Columbian year. We've been in the situation of COVID-19 for almost 10 months. We have much to do with the Knights of our Councils. Membership is key to our existence and so is retention. I won't speak about retention except it's that, that it is, is equally as important as recruiting. We work hard to recruit and we should work hard to keep, just as hard to keep them as Knights. As of November 15, 2020, we had 56 members and we heard from Elaine that it's 57 members join the Knights online and through councils. Your membership team has been busy and we placed another 100 or so, it turned out to be 115 members into the councils uh, from state council 98058. Financial secretaries should check their members online, kfc.org to get these members signed into their councils and to get them involved as soon as you can. If they're willing to join your council, that would be great. But some may not want to be active now, so kindly let us know and we will take care of that member and re-put them back into 98058 until they're ready to join. We are in our second quarter and I've attached a second quarter incentive sheet so that you're aware of this and we'll go over that after. And please remember when you're recruiting, use the McGivney 2020, it's the code for free membership till the end of the year. And an already announcement, I spoke about making circle of honor before the end of December. And if every council executive member and director recruited one member, that would be awesome. And if this would happen, we'd have 2,295 members. This may be a stretch. So what if we only did 25% of that? Well, we'd still have 573 members. We'll even go a little further. 
If every council could engage four new members, we would have more ideas, more help to do all of our programs, and we could still be a circle of honor. The circle of honor is an end goal. The main goal is to maintain, maintain our councils with programs that help our community, our church, our knights and their families, and to get more involved, to get men more involved with the knights. As your membership team, all we ask is that you do the best you can. Stay motivated and encourage your fellow officers and brothers as well. The success of our new and older members depends on your support today. Get a phoning committee going and call your members now. See how they are doing and see what we can do for them. Get their feedback on new or different programs or efforts. Do this a couple of times a year. Remember the Leave No Neighbor Behind program and cultivate this into your recruiting practices for every gentleman in your parish, not just council members. Let's not become complacent because of this situation of COVID-19 and our inactivity in our group settings. Please do what you can, but stay in touch with your members and keep Father involved as well. Plan, prepare and execute. This is my report and uh, I'd like to also, when you guys are, when, we're, when we are recruiting, please remember to mention the member benefits uh, right from getting the Columbian Magazine, the Rosary, the Daily Mass Remembrance, Insurance, Fraternal uh, Benefits, Family, Orphan Benefits, Member Spouse Benefits, Widow Benefits, Scholarships, Leadership Development, all those extras we should be mentioning to our new members what they are getting. It's very important that they, uh, that they know exactly what they're getting into, but exactly what it involves with our dues and what it pays for. I'm going to go through, uh, before I get to my, uh, maybe, and maybe I'll do that now because it's on up on the screen now, we're gonna go through the recruiting ideas. Uh, I did some are in the book and I'll let you read those because I think it's very important uh, what we do, but I, I did a few more, so I'd really like to read them out and I sent them uh, on now, I sent them to Peter and uh, and I also sent them to uh, Jerry so that we can put this in the electronic copy. Um, but let's utilize some of these fellas. I just did this the other night. Communication, which I think is very, very important, especially now. Call your membership and do it a few times a year and not just at dues time. Talk to them and ask them if what we are doing matters and maybe they have other ideas for the council. Keep an open mind and think outside the box. Don't be afraid to be different and share your successes with other councils. Use the parish directories to make contact with all Catholic men. Talk with Father and with his help, call possible candidates, deliver the right message. Encourage your councils to plan. Those councils that fail to plan, plan to fail. Please make a plan. Plan with your council for tomorrow and mentor members in the many roles of the council as replacements for the regular stand-ins. We are all getting older. It is our responsibility to expand the order. So recruiting as well as retention is all our responsibility. Leaders, which are all of us holding an office position must allocate, inspire and motivate other members to become better knights. Reinforce and then repeat, repeat and repeat. Motivate, overcome objections and make membership a priority. When recruiting, use your story as to why you became a knight. Honest real life stories always means more than someone reading a script without emotion. Use recruiters to recruit and others to mentor or train. Good leaders get things done and brother knights, you are all good leaders. Incentives work. Supreme and state have offered many incentives. Councils can do the same and share with their councils. All goals are attainable. Set a goal and give it an honest effort for success. All we ask is your best effort. Think of membership as a program and one every council must do for your year end rewards. Make it a pact within your council as one of your own council goals. One of the key ingredients to a successful council is the best man in the right positions. I know that in a perfect world, we would have many to choose from, but within your plan, talk to your personnel and put them in the perfect spots for the council to succeed. Have a communication director and maximize visibility in the community and the council. When in public or church, look the part of a proud member of the Knights of Columbus whenever you can. Wear something that identifies you as a knight. 
this is an opportunity for everyone to help people change and possibly save some people's lives. It is our time to do Father McGivney's work as servants of the church and members of the Knights of Columbus. Support your parish priest and your field agent. They are the most successful recruiters that we have and we should use them. They want to help. They need to help. Utilize the training online. This is for everyone in the council, not just the officers. Use the retention manual with your membership. Advertise in the parish bulletin and remember potential members are all around you. Using the same guy to do drives can work against you. Use different men when possible. Appeal to the family as well as to the candidate. Try something new. If you keep getting the same response, results won't change if you don't change. Learn to adapt and ask your DDs what other councils are doing. Hold a council brainwashing session, brainstorming session, not brainwashing, but do a brainstorming session where you talk about what works and what doesn't work. Make it part of the meeting. Lastly, try texting your membership or candidates when all else fails. I believe in phoning, but in today's world, texting is a choice for many of younger men. And I wrote this down in the bottom. Aspire to inspire before you expire. And it's just a, just a little something for us to remember. Uh, now, you can take that back off the screen, Joe. Uh, we go back to your manual, and uh, we're going to go through, just go through the rewards for the second half, because they're, they're done by the end, of, uh, at the end of this month. Recruiter incentives. Recruiters who recruit between October 1st and December 31st will get $15 for every member that joins a council or an online as the proposer. District deputy incentives. Each district deputy promotes and works with two of his councils to host a parish church drive between October 1 and the end of December with a minimum of two new members recruited will receive a golf shirt. And it'll be one that I haven't worn yet. Uh, each district deputy promotes and works with three of his councils to host three parish church drives between October 1 and December 31st, with a minimum of five members recruited will receive a rosary and a watch or $100. Supreme award for DDs. Let's not forget this, guys. 12 nights before Christmas. Let's really get after this. I, I thought this was kind of cute when I saw it, but 12 nights before Christmas, if we all got down to it right now, I'm sure that we could have some DDs do that. Council incentives. Councils that receive their membership quarter by the end of December will receive $150. Councils that receive 75% of their membership quarter before the end of December will receive $100. And councils with 50% of the membership will receive $50. As well, councils reaching a minimum of 50% of membership quota and having completed one fraternal benefits evening by December 31st, they'll be placed at a random draw to, see, to receive one of three centennial plates provided by regional uh, Canadian Regional Training Director, Aline Kaye. And we did, did have an opportunity to see them, and, and I think I'd like one of those too. <laughs> Councils that recruit one new member that did not recruit a member last year for 2019-2020 will also receive a $50 bonus. And Council's forms and the safe... Uh, Environment compliant incentives, councils that have completed or submitted Form 185, 365, and have all officers safe and com compliant will be entered into a draw, one per council, for five draws to receive $100. I think these are, are really good incentives, guys, and, and that's what they are. They're just incentives. It's, it's a little bit of bait, but I think we could all uh, we could all get those, and we have to have goals. Yeah, we, you know, uh, where the State Deputy Joe talked about the, the number of members, uh, we need 325 uh, for a net of 270. Uh, those are attainable. Uh, even, even during this time, we've certainly got lots of time to, 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 to not just phone uh, the parishioners or everybody in our church or family, but also our neighbors and, and anybody else that we know. Council processing of candidates. There's been a lot of questions about uh, exactly what we do. So uh, if we happen to engage a member and get them to go through the ceremony. The Supreme Council will send each council a list of participating and non-participating members and to ensure that the correct members are pro processed for each council. 
And we're asking each council to record their members using the following standard methods. If they are new members, please use the candidate tab in the offices online, which can be used by the Grand Knight and financial secretary to report a new member while watching the training video. The form 100 does not need to be submitted if the candidate tab process is followed. If you're not using the candidate tab process, a form 100 will need to be submitted in the usual manner. Online members. If properly requested, the online member will appear in the Council Prospect tab in Officers Online. If not, you can add them to your Candidates tab. In either case, the ceremonial process date can be added to their record, and clicking the Process button reports a new member. Advancing members. Members advancing from first or second degree to the third degree can be updated in the Member Management application. Alternatively, the second and third degree dates can be reported to member records at kfc.org using a form 100. Additionally, the following matters are handled by the financial secretary, which are dues initiation and regulated and collected, also the membership cards. In the, and we did talk about the circle of honor and uh, as the way it stands right now, and that would have been by November the 17th, uh, when we finally get to our net, we still need 294 members. So Brother Knights, we, we really have to uh, get online with our membership. Uh, I know it's a difficult time, but we really have to work at our membership. Uh, this is really plays on the existence of our very councils. Now, I don't know if Abel is back. Now, that's my report. Uh, if there is any questions... If not, I'll just move right on to Brother Abel's if he's not online here yet. I don't see him back yet. Uh, I have a, sorry, I have a, one question, if you wouldn't mind while you're, we're waiting. Not a problem. Um, yeah, it's Jerry, and I am a financial secretary. Uh, just give me the process again. What should I do to check if you've transferred online members to my council? Where, where you, should, find that out? you should be in offices online, go into offices online, go to your members and should be under your candidates tab. Uh, okay. We, uh, Abel and I had transferred uh, approximately 115 members from 98058 into uh, councils uh, closest to their proximity of their address. Uh, I did some uh, random calling uh, of some of these members to ask them exactly which council they wanted to go in and, and, uh, the majority of them all were the councils that they were close to. So we did that as a number. Now, if you if you happen to phone the financial secretary's phone these guys to get them into their council and they indicate they want to be into another council, uh, that that can be identified to me and then I can change that uh, on my sheet and put them into the rec council. Some of these members may not want to join, as I stated. Uh, they may say, you know what, I prefer not to join right now. Uh, let me know, I can, we'll put them back into 98058, uh, at which time then we can decide. Uh, I couldn't phone them all, 115 people are an awful lot of people to phone and, and uh, I, do, I do enough phoning now. So hopefully when you guys contact them, uh, they'll accept the invitation and come back in. Otherwise, like I said, call me and uh, I can put them back into the state council. Perfect. No, I just thank you. That clarifies. Okay. Mine. Yeah. You, it, there should be no problem finding them in the uh, candidates tab in offices online and member management. Okay. okay. I am here, Dan, if you want me to do a report. Okay. Yeah. Abel, yeah, you can go ahead. Uh, now, what we're going to do, uh, like I said, Abel's here, and we'll just follow the booklet. Uh, I believe after Abel is, uh, is Brother Chris. After Brother Chris is done, we'll go to Brother Brian. And then we'll go to Brother Dennis, he could do his, then Marty Clement, and uh, then we'll go to Al, and then uh, finally Greg. Okay, so that's the way we'll, we'll go from there. Is that okay, gentlemen? Okay, so carry on, uh, Abel. Thank you, Brother Dan, and uh, good morning to all. Uh, the only thing I would really like to promote is the fact that, okay, with this online stuff, um, I'm gonna speak candidly. When they first, come out with this idea about the online membership a number of years ago. I'm not gonna lie, I was extremely skeptical. Um, I didn't think it would work. I didn't think it was the right, you know, I just wasn't too sure about it. 
since taking on this thing and viewing what is happening, um, and I'm looking at numbers since the conception of this thing starting, and I would like to apologize because in my report, I put down a number of 154 members and that's wrong. I was using the wrong, uh, the wrong list that I had. 360 members have joined the Knights of Columbus in Saskatchewan. That proved me wrong big time. Um, it works. The online membership is, um, is a way of the future. It's a way of, it's another tool that for us to use. The only thing that I would uh, strongly uh, say about it is it won't work unless we promote it. If we're not promoting the online, if we're not getting the information out there, it's, it doesn't work. And when we're in a situation now where we're all stuck at home, we can't go tapping shoulders, we can't go and uh, ask our parishioners, we can't uh, go and work, you know, the, the, the membership drives and stuff like that. I think the online thing is a huge tool to use. Um, we at our council, for example, we promote big time through social media, through Facebook, through Twitter, through all these different forms of uh, social media in order to, to get our message out. And it's working. Um, every parish is now, well, not every one of them, but a huge amount of parishes are now using social media to get their bulletins out, to get their masses out, to get their, all their information is going out through social media. And as I put in my report, if we tied into those, you're, you are getting your message to your, all your parishioners, all, everybody in your area that's involved in the parish. It's, it's a great tool to use. Um, everything else has been said. Um, I don't know what else to add other than um, the uh, every council should be constantly checking out on the prospect tab of their Supreme membership page and checking uh, to see what members have been put in there. I was talking to a number of councils that had absolutely no idea that they had members that had joined up and they were already joined up to their councils, but they had no information on it. So it's very key to, to, to keep on that and transfer those members to your, to your council. You got to remember that these individuals have already shown the initiative of wanting to become Part of our organization and if we don't do something about it they just sit there in limbo they just sit there and we don't you know at least acknowledge that they are interested while well, their interest is going to de be depleted quite quickly so i would uh i would re strongly recommend that everybody all the councils and dds um keep on the membership management tab and and check on their prospects. Uh, there was a number of councils. Uh, when Dan and I, we, we put a number of members into uh, what, what we thought was per, their prospective councils, um, that there was a couple of mistakes. Uh, and since then has been rectified. If you have any members that don't belong to that parish or in a different community, just let us know and we will find where they belong and we will send the information accordingly and get them going. Um, but yeah, so when we have 360 members that have joined on strictly online, and I believe I, the last time I checked, it was just under 30 that were joined so far this year uh, online. Um, it's working, so we got to promote it. We have to start using the social media aspect uh, to, to promote and check out other other councils. Check out other. I follow a number of state uh, Facebook pages, and it's amazing how much information they're putting on there. And, and uh, I know I know more about councils in Missouri than I do about some councils in Saskatchewan because you, you they're not they're not advertising. They're not using the social media, and yet 
I always know when they are doing some kind of a drive or a food drive down in uh, in Missouri because you know, it comes across my my news feed. So. Other than that, I think that's all I have to say. Um, I don't know if, I, if there's anything else that I missed, Dan, that you want me to touch on. But I'm just going to add uh, one thing. Uh, thank you, Abel, very much for your report. Uh, Abel and I are working on right now 14 members uh, that joined online that are inactive, inactive for various reasons. And I managed to call some. And out of the ones that I phoned, uh, four of them, in fact, most of them didn't even know that they were inactive. I phoned them all and they were going to, they're going to try to reactivate themselves. And so that's what we're working on right now is phoning these inactive members. But it's critical that once they get into the candidate tab, uh, that the financial secretaries and grand knights, uh, especially the secretaries, can get them into their councils, contact them, get them in there. Uh, let's not let them linger. But thank you very much, Abel. Good report. Uh, actually, I just got something in the email that I just found, Abel, and just to let you know and everybody else know, since up to December the 1st, we've had 41 members uh, join online. So that's uh, that's the figure. And I, but I just got that email. So Anyway, we'll just uh, thank you, Abel. We'll move on now straight into uh, uh, Worthy Chris. If you could uh, start off with your report, please. Thank you, Brother Dan. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my report is uh, on pages 12 to 19 of the booklet. And before I begin my, my report, uh, I'd like to mention that uh, it's already been mentioned. Uh, thank you to all of you for, for being the leaders in your part of the province. You know, every, every great idea begins with one individual. And that individual uh, is, is all of us. Those individuals are us. We are the catalyst to motivate, inspire, and to really get things moving in our area of the province. And if each one of us does our part, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that, that we can achieve a circle of honor again this year. Uh, we've proven it, and uh, we can do it again. So I'm going to talk... Uh, quickly here on four main ideas. One is uh, ideas about how to keep members interested. It's so important to keep members interested once we get them signed up uh, for two reasons, uh, probably more than two reasons. Uh, these members uh, help us fulfill our mission. And the, the members who we lose, uh, they're really a negative effect to us because if, if, they, if they get suspended or, or don't want to be part of the order, they're not going to really be a positive influence on their circle of uh, influence around them. So their family members, neighbors, they're not going to help us to recruit. So that's, that's really important to consider. So on page uh, 12 of the booklet, there's 22 uh, ideas mentioned of how to keep members interested. And I think it's really important that the, that you or the DDs, uh, when you visit your councils or do Zoom meetings, uh, talk about some of these uh, ideas and get the Grand Knights to implement some of them. Uh, they work and uh, there's, there's many good ideas there on how to keep members interested. Uh, the second thing is uh, there's uh, quite a variety of resources uh, that give councils ideas of what they can do. Uh, so I'm not going to read them all, but they're on page 13 of our booklet. And I think it's really important that the DDs and the Grand Knights, uh, if you're having virtual meetings or if you're having your district meetings, uh, go over the history resources with the Grand Knights and encourage them to use them, to show, to show them to their members, talk about them, uh, there's there's uh, uh, PowerPoints, uh, for example, uh, A, uh, other resources, the Council Growth and Retention Manual. That's a really good resource to use. Uh, the second one is Membership Recruitment and, and a Retention Manual. Uh, and another very good manual. And of course, our Leave, Leave No Neighbor Behind Program Manual has, has many good ideas. So these these 
resources are available to us, I think it's really important that we use them. Okay, the next slide. Uh, now, we need to develop a, cult, a, cult, a culture of membership retention. I think too often we, we look at people who don't attend meetings or don't pay their dues, and the first thought is we got to suspend them. I think it's really important that we've got to work on, on finding out why they're not paying their dues, uh, why they're not involved, uh, what they're not getting out of the nights, and maybe trying to find out what they would like to get out of the nights. So we can do this in three ways. We can implement some of the retention ideas I just mentioned on page 12, and we have to communicate and make them aware of what benefits uh, they get out of being members of the Knights. And each council is encouraged to, to develop a retention plan. And there, we have a sample on page 14 and 15, which I'll very briefly touch on. Next slide. Uh, there's two documents on how we can keep our members interested. Uh, one is, uh, I already mentioned, on page 12 of your booklet. The other one is on the website. It's how to encourage member participation in meetings and programs. I think there's about 25 ideas that we can use, and uh, they work. Next slide, communication and awareness. Uh, I will have some ideas in every every Grand Lakes and Financial Secretary bulletin and in each newsletter uh, of things we can do. Uh, we have a list of membership retention ideas on page 12. Uh, there's a list of available resources, and DDs need to make the information available at district and council meetings. So we have to communicate this to our Grand Knights and our councils that these, these ideas and resources are available for them to use uh, and implement in their councils. Next slide. After we, we uh, become aware of all the information, we've got to put that into action because the information is not any good. It's just information on paper. It, it becomes live when we put it into action. So we have to move from knowledge to analysis and application. So number one, DDs need to encourage all the councils and their districts to develop a council retention plan and to work with the councils to implement and monitor the plan. Councils need to implement the plan and to work the plan. And I do have a, a sample on page 14 and 15, which I will kind of get into now. So this will be a new perspective on council retention. The focus needs to be on retention of all council members and not on suspension. We should do all we can to involve and retain the members by continuously implementing sound retention practices. We can go to the next slide. Uh, DDs are to encourage council to develop processes and procedures for retention program plan. A, we, ha we, we have smart roster management, which I'll get into in the next slide. And we have to make a plan and implement and work the plan. And a huge part of the plan is to continuously implement and use retention ideas. Now, the SPART member management, next slide. How does it work? We have to apply personal, fiscal, and inviting practices on how the membership of the council is treated, tracked, and tallied. So we take stock of our members. We do an analysis of our membership. We, we assess all, we, we divide our members into groups, like which ones attend regular meetings are involved, which ones attend meetings but, uh, or, or which ones are involved but don't attend meetings, our honorary members, honorary life, disabled members, the members in arrears, how long they've been in arrears, <clears throat> our past grand nights, charter members. Once we've done that, uh, we, we form a retention committee in the next slide. <coughs> Uh, that, in, that includes uh, at least 10 people. That will include uh, the Grand Knight, Deputy Grand Knight, Membership Director, Trustees, District Deputy, Council Chaplain, Agent, to Council Retention Chairman. And each one of these are a really important part of, of the group. Then we divide up our members. At, 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 and then the next step is to work the plan. We check to see how we phone all our members 
or or arrange visits with them, <coughs> we check to see how the members are doing. We get feedback from them, uh, and then we arrange a personal visit with at-risk members. I think it's really important to arrange a personal visit with them if we can. Now, the council also implements uh, retention practices to keep the members interested. Next slide. After the visit, if successful contact is made, we work with the individual and emphasize the importance and benefits of, of being a member and paying dues. The member may not want to be involved, but we can tell them, uh, by paying your dues, you're supporting all the good work that the, the council and the parish does. That might be the only reason that they might stay a member, and that's fine. Uh, another reason they may become they may stay a member is, is because of insurance. That's fine as well. So many, many people join for many different reasons. They may join because of spiritual development, service to others, family activity, leadership opportunities, or insurance to protect their family. The key is to listen to a member and to rectify any issues that he may be uh, having of not being involved, and we try and accommodate that. The next slide. Now, suspension basically will be the last option. Uh, suspensions are part of managing the council roster smartly. If all the attempts fail at reconciliation with the member, we, we need to proceed to withdrawal or suspension. For with the withdrawal, all we need is a letter from the night written by the night. For suspension, we have to follow uh, the proper procedures, which basically uh, the Saskatchewan suspension procedures are on pages 16 and 17 of, of, of the booklet. I'm not gonna go through them all, but I think it's important that the DDs let the Grand Knights know that uh, these are the procedures to follow. And then the Supreme Guidelines on page 18 and 19 of the booklet. Now, uh, on the last slide, uh, I've given some reasons of what I found out of why uh, members may be at risk. I won't go through them all, but I think these, these are some valid reasons of maybe why people aren't being involved. So in closing, uh, I'd just like to, to give you some, some very quick stats. Uh, now our intake is 325, our net is 270. Up until now, we have 57 members, our net is 14. So if we subtract our net from our intake, we've had 43 suspensions to date. So if we divide that by, by the time that has, has passed, we're getting about 8.2 a month. So if the same trend continues, we'll have about 98 for the year. So if we subtract 98 from our intake of 325, we get 227. That means we need an extra uh, 43 members just to stay on pace for our 270. Our, our debts, our net net, uh, I figured out to be uh, right now 110. So if we divide that by the time that's gone by, we're at about 21 debts per month. We know our membership is getting older, so we're getting quite a few, we will be getting quite a few more debts. So the bottom line is uh, we can't really manage our debts, but we can ma manage our suspensions. And part of managing the suspensions is having a good retention plan in place, which is like another program, and we have to really work it. So I encourage all of the DDs and all of us to, to really uh, focus on, on retention of our members because it will help the bottom line. And basically, we're retaining members that, that will serve the church and, and really do good work for us. So thank you very much. And uh, keep up. Keep let's let's all commit to to uh, each doing our part. And I'm very confident that uh, by the end of the year uh, we can have some very good numbers. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brother Chris.
Uh, we'll go now to uh, Brother Brian. Question, sorry. Go ahead, question. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I just, um, I was just looking at um, the if retention fails. Now, hopefully that doesn't happen. But you talk about written uh, note by the member. In today's technology and everything, uh, will an email suffice from the member as long as the member has initiated it and sent it? There's a date and it shows that it's come from the member. Will that suffice? Yes, it will. I believe last year we had a couple of cases uh, where the email was sent and Supreme did uh, recognize it. Thank you. Any other questions for Chris? Okay, if there's none, we'll move on to uh, Brother Brian for the north or for the south, sorry. I didn't know you moved. Didn't know you moved, Brian. <laughs> I can do anything. I'm just going up here. <laughs> Not to worry. Huh? He'd love to move to the north. <laughs> uh, worthy State Deputy Joe, uh, State Chaplain Father Ed, State Associate Chaplain Bishop Brian, Director of Growth Canada, immediate or past State Deputy uh, uh, Brother Elaine, uh, State Board Officers, Brother Knight Saul. Um, pleasure to be here on a sunny December morning uh, in Saskatchewan. Uh, waiting to go south for doing the summer, we can uh, get away and just enjoy everything as we always have been in the past, right? Yeah, no, I, uh, the, the COVID has, uh, has really taken us uh, a bit about, and put us back on our keisters and, and having to do things differently. And uh, this seems to be an opportunity rather than necessarily a, uh, a time for, uh, for just doing nothing. It, uh, rather than doing the type of things that we used to do, we're challenged to do things differently. And uh, State Deputy Joe talked about uh, how uh, back in 1882, when the Knights of Columbus was founded and the, the things that our blessed uh, Father McGivney had to do to, to get the Knights of Columbus started uh, are the very, very same reasons why we're here today in 2020 and why it's so important that we have a Knights of Columbus and the, the councils are out there promoting Catholicism, uh, involving friends and neighbors in, uh, in being charitable with, uh, with their neighbors. Um, I'm not going to repeat a whole lot what Chris has said, and that's the type of things uh, the, that we are doing together, uh, North and South. Uh, so I'll be really brief. But I wanted to, uh, uh, to just focus on what it is that is the responsibility and role of a district deputy. Um, you probably have been watching and seeing the councils in your district and some of them active, more active than others and some not necessarily active. Uh, but as district deputy, one of the key responsibilities you have is the, the health and uh, well-being of the councils in your district. Uh, and the guide that the Supreme puts out for district deputies is, is, uh, is underlines that in, in all of the, the 10 points to be a successful DD. How, health, how healthy and how well-being are your councils in this year of COVID? Uh, they're probably sort of a lot of them just waiting and seeing and waiting for things to turn around before they start moving. Your job as the DD is to, uh, uh, is to understand that, but also then to act upon it and say, how can we motivate these councils to be uh, active in promoting the Knights of Columbus, uh, which underscores the, uh, uh, the, what our Supreme Knight has always said about Knights of Columbus is not to those that are placard waving on the streets campaigning to do this and that, but rather how can we be the men that other men want to be with? How can we be councils that men want to join? It's always been said that you, can, you can't choose your family, but you can choose your friends. And you can choose to be a Knights of Columbus. 
what are those reasons that men out there are willing and able to and, and say, you know, I want to be more spiritual and I want to be other with other like-minded men to make a difference in this world, to be the charitable works that evangelize, that bring people back into the Catholic Church, to add people to the, those pews that we see that, uh, that they're, uh, they're falling away. That's the job of the DD, is to motivate those councils to be strong, to be healthy, and looking after the well-being of their, uh, their men. We are looking to you to help and the type of things that have been talked about this morning and uh, media past eight deputy Chris has, uh, has provided you with some tools to do and I underscored that. The form 944 is a one count is a semi annual report that uh, that DDs do for assessing their activities of the uh, of the council for assessing the health of the council. Complete that for each of your councils and it'll show you, it'll be a checklist for you as to which ones you need to focus on and, uh, and provide assistance to. Um, Brother Chris and I and the rest of the state board team are here to support you. And if you identify councils that need some assistance in, uh, in getting more active to being the men that they, other men want to be with, uh, by all means, call on us and we're going to try and help you. It's going to be difficult times. It's not going to be as, as it was in the past where we just do meetings in the churches and uh, get people uh, together and, and do things. But we can do things now and it'll be important for us to do. So thank you again for, uh, for coming out and, uh, and being the men and the leaders of, uh, of your districts and look forward to, uh, to working with you on these next six months. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Uh, any questions for Brian, anybody? Yeah, I have a question, uh, Jim Langen here. So that form 944, uh, once we complete that, uh, who gets it? It, uh, you know, that's a good question. I, uh, I, I just assumed, and I haven't seen anything that's changed, but there, uh, uh, it should go to your state deputy uh, we'd also encourage you to go to the cluster leader, to, uh, as well as uh, there is a uh, is someone in Supreme that was supposed to get it. I can't uh, can't right off the top of my head figure that out. Uh, Worthy State Deputy Joe, do you remember? I just I just put a note in the comments, but uh, generally it goes to Supreme CC me if you can and the cluster leader. Um, but we'll talk later about I have a council assessment form, which is going to give me a lot more information than that 944. Stephen Hinckley, I believe. Yeah, I, I, it just escapes me. Yeah. Okay. Hey, anything else, that? fellas? Okay, uh, we'll move on. We'll go right to uh, uh, Worthy State Ceremonial Coordinator uh, Denis, and he can do his report. Are you Hello. here, Dennis? Yeah. Yes, go, go ahead. Do you want my video? <laughs> I don't know. Well, not, your, not, your, not your personal one, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, good morning all. Um, and uh, it's great to uh, see all of you again. Um, on my report, um, what I did this month is what I was finding is that I was kind of, um, you know, once you've explained everything um, within the uh, framework of these circumstances, uh, namely the uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, the pandemic, the restrictions we have and so on, basically um, I was kind of rehashing the same thing. So I said, well, you know, what, what the district deputies need, what everybody needs is um, kind of a, a, a guideline that allows them to set up their team or to set up a, um, a, a ceremonial, um, either virtually or if, if it becomes possible, uh, in-person uh, uh, exemplification, 
but something that sets it out very clearly um, so that everybody can just look it up and find it. And on my report, which is on page 22, I outline that very clearly. Okay, so this, it can, page 22, although it's just one page, uh, has um, several links on it. Those links will give anyone, anyone who is planning an exemplification, all the information, absolutely all the information they will need. All right. So, uh, and it starts at, um, on the A, guidance and resources available. And then you click on the Saskatchewan website and uh, there you go into uh, the state forms and then you go into the, uh, I think it's called degrees, uh, first, second, third uh, degrees. Anyways, it's, it's on the exemplifications, that section. And so uh, Brother Peter Folk uh, and I set that up uh, so that you just go there and then you have everything you need. So you, you would look uh, first, you click on the uh, Saskatchewan exemplification video protocol document. That protocol document gives you all the steps that you need. Then the uh, video, uh, the, exemplica uh, the exemplification video checklist. And that's a really good checklist. It's very concise and it shows you all the things, oh, you know, that you need to do and you just check them off as you do them, and you've got it all, you've, you've done everything you need to. Um, the first step, of course, is that SK-01 exemplification form, and that's basically where you, uh, you indicate that you intend to have an exemplification, you send, fill that in, send it to myself and to, uh, and to the, uh, I believe to Joe, and maybe Dan, Anyways, and with that form, we know that, uh, let's say, okay, uh, Brother Leon Pouliot uh, held an exemplification. He filled in the SK-01. I knew he, when it was, where it would be, all the details and so on, and then the communication can start if he has any questions, if I have any information for him and so on. And then you continue going down. The, the, the new ceremonial video is on there, click on that and you've got the video. That's the one um, like, uh, uh, I believe um, Leon did an in-person uh, exemplification. Uh, Saskatoon, um, just uh, this past week, did uh, uh, an exemplification with the video. Uh, that was under the direction of uh, uh, Adrian Pichet and uh, they did, uh, and it was done by Zoom. They did an excellent job. It, they did all the steps and so on. It's a very good model to follow. So, uh, so we, we did it that way. We know it works. Um, it was done virtually and, uh, and it, wor it worked very well. After you're finished, there's a, uh, there's a new form 450 that you uh, fill in and you send that in to uh, ceremonials at Supreme and a copy to Joe, uh, State Deputy Joe. And then I like uh, to get a copy and I, I'm sure Joe would send me a copy as well. And then uh, very, very useful is the exemplification booklet that has the actual exemplification on it, but it has a lot more information than that in it. The exemplification booklet, um, either in English or in French, uh, tells you uh, the, the people you need on your team, uh, what their parts are, uh, what material you'll need, what uh, paraphernalia you need, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, the one thing, uh, all the paraphernalia is pretty easy to get, pretty straightforward. Uh, one thing we had a little challenge with, uh, that Leon had a little challenge with in uh, Leoville, was the uh, fibers. And uh, uh, he had trouble finding fibers that you could break. Most of them are nylon, and you say you break this fiber, and they can't break it. That wouldn't uh, that wouldn't bode too well. So I have a bunch of fibers. Uh, I don't know if Joe can help me on that. Uh, where you could get you can get fibers from me. I've got lots, but uh, that break, you know. 
but uh, I uh, I don't know if there's a, a place where you could get fibers, and I, I will look into that to make sure. But uh, make sure that you have fibers and fibers that can break. Um, other than that, um, there's a lot uh, more information there about the, uh, uh, you know, to make arrangements with your pastor and so on and so forth, and, uh, and preparing a team if you're doing it in person. I believe at this time, um, I, I don't think I would reckon, recommend an in-person exemplification uh, with the uh, with the way the uh, um, you know the coronavirus is uh, is going with the restrictions we have. I believe um, we should go with the uh, with the video and the way the Saskatoon team did it. Uh, it worked really well. So uh, so we've done it. We know exactly how it works. We know uh, uh, we have all the people who were involved in it, uh, worked out all the, um, uh, you know, kind of the, uh, the logistics of it and so on. I know at the, before the video, um, uh, uh, Adrian Piche read uh, the parts of the constitutional role that the candidates should know. Uh, and that was really important. That was really good. And then he read the promises that they would be asked to make. And I thought that was good too, because then it gave, they knew exactly before the video started what they were getting into, what would be asked of them and, and so on. So uh, it went very smoothly. And I recommend uh, you, do, you follow that same model. So, uh, you know, those that uh, information and help uh, guidance will be available to you uh, through myself and um, and I'd be uh, looking towards that Saskatoon team to to help with sharing that. That's about it. Uh, any questions? I seem to be frozen on that screen there. Oh my goodness. We got your best side. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> As if things weren't bad enough. <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much, Brother Denny, Dennis. Can I just ask a question, Denny? Sure. Yes. Um, I know it's been asked, uh, maybe at some of our chapter meetings, uh, maybe more so, but uh, when the exemplification, when a new member takes the exemplification on demand, um, the Supreme video, mm -hmm. uh, the question has been asked because the member can do it on their own at whatever time they want to do it. Um, uh, hopefully they would let the council know that they've attended, but the form 450 then, will the council submit that or will you let the DD know and, and they can submit it? And the question has been asked about the rosary, the pin, you know, those types of things that the member should get. Should the council, will, the, will Supreme provide that or should the council then uh, supply that to the new member? Well, I would say the council should supply that to the new members. The uh, uh, I know on that exemplification from Saskatoon, uh, they were told. Correct me if I'm wrong, Joe. That uh, their um, uh, their council would be supplying them with their rosary and their pin after the degree. I believe they, uh, like I put in here on my last uh, note here keep your district deputy and your Knights of Columbus field agent in the loop really important there. And I think the absolutely the, you know, the district deputy, uh, you know, should be aware that they're taking the exemplification for sure. And, uh, and, and, and then be, uh, you know, probably submit that 450, the district deputy should, but somebody uh, like, uh, Gary Nolan used to say, somebody's got to submit it. So if uh, if the district deputy doesn't, then the council should submit it. But somebody's got to submit that 450. Very important. Yeah. Right. So, so I, I guess that those that's amongst those things, that material that the, and paraphernalia, like the council should have a supply of, uh, of pins and, and rosaries, you know, that uh, the candidates kits and the Father McGivney cards. For, for the candidates and and then provide them with that. Does that answer your question? Yes, I, I do. And I think I saw uh, uh, Elaine's response as well, that if the if, uh, if, if the member takes the Supreme online exemplification, they will 
also supply the rosary and the pin, correct, uh, Elaine? I oh, guess the, the last question I'll ask, and sorry to uh, uh, take this up, but um, uh, I'm happy to hear that Saskatoon and, uh, and uh, Leon, you did your uh, exemplification and you used the Saskatchewan then, one I anticipate or I suspect, um, uh, because that, in, that in, uh, means a little more involvement of the council, I think, than... Uh, than the supreme one because the member can do it on their own after an invitation, you know, that sort of thing. But the uh, Saskatchewan one, I think, uh, entails a little more uh, involvement by councils to do that because of the checklist and things, which I think is good. Are you finding that uh, they are using the Saskatchewan one um, um, more so than the online uh, supreme one? Or do you know? The only one I'm aware of is Saskatoon. And uh, like I said, uh, Leon, uh, I, I believe he did an in-person one. Yes, he did. He had his team do it. So uh, uh, that's the advantage of this uh, new, uh, uh, new exemplification. It came at a very good time because it is one that can be done locally. We don't have a team traveling around. It can be done uh, using a video very easily, and it can be done even in person uh, using social distancing and so on. So I would, you know, I, I do really encourage using the Saskatchewan one, not because, uh, because I'm in it, but because, uh, you know, it's more personal. And, uh, and I'd sure like to find out, uh, you know, uh, hear from a lot more people that would be using it. I, another thing I didn't mention was that uh, we were on like about half an hour before the, uh, as, as well as the candidates uh, came on before the exemplification started. So it, it came on at seven o'clock. The exemplification was at 7.30. During between seven and 7.30, a lot of discussions, uh, a lot of uh, questions and answers and, and, uh, and uh, maybe even a little visiting between the, uh, the people on the team, the people from the council, the district deputy, uh, you know, myself and so on, and, and the candidates. So they, uh, you know, by the time the exemplification started, you know, people, the candidates were comfortable, they knew what was going on, all questions had been answered, uh, you know, they'd been prepared. Uh, everybody was prepared. And I think that's important too. So. That personal touch you're talking about, uh, Paul, personal contact, uh, you get that that way. Even though it's uh, virtual, a lot of personal contact and, uh, and, and well done. If I Thank may, you. If I may for a minute, uh, we had our personal, can everybody hear me? Yeah. So we had our personal exemplification in October and it went over very, very well. We had about 30 people that stayed after mass to watch and nothing but good compliments. Uh, it was very well attended and we had a good time doing it and the candidates are very, very happy. So something to look forward to. Thank you. Okay, um, anything else we should uh, move on? We'll move on to uh, Brother Marty for cultural diversity report, please. Thank you, Brother Dunn. Uh, am I clear to all of you? Yes, you are. Here. Yes. Okay. So, greetings, Orti brothers. So glad to see you all here today. This means that we are together, despite this challenge against pandemic. Humanity's inclination to be kind during this coronavirus pandemic crisis is unprecedented. We the Knights need to show an uplifting demonstration of solidarity. Solidarity has also been a central concept in Catholic social teaching since the end of 19th century. It figures prominently in liberation theology in which solidarity and communion with the poor is a fundamental spiritual commitment. As a night, 
it is our moral duty to work together for the benefits of all. I choose the word solidarity in this report to remind all of us in our second principle of unity that we are bound together, whether we came from different races. We need to help each other's needs. Whether we are confronting pandemic, global warming, natural disasters, income inequality, racism, or gender-based violence, Solidarity depends on how we come together. It is defined by how we understand and enact our responsibilities and duties as a night and to our relationship with each other. We need to ignore the differences and potential conflict between the needs and values of different groups of people around us. We need to encourage more men to join in our order. And this is one of our missions. But how can we do that if we show nothing? Or if we project something, but we give nothing? Or we are not together? One essence of solidarity is that we don't necessarily have a personal relationship with those on whose behalf we take action. The truth is we as knights, we have a strong sense of solidarity because we belong to the religious group that rely on our Catholic faith over science to protect ourselves. Now, we need a strong sense of social solidarity to promote our order agenda and values. Whatever form we invoke, it is helpful to remember these three aspects of solidarity that I will share to all of you today. Number one, solidarity is always about relationship. We cannot be in solidarity alone. Who are we in solidarity with and what defines that relationship? Well, in solidarity, we are leaders and we need to build bridges to others so those people who will walk on that bridge surely will follow us. Second, solidarity always requires us to be intentional about our commitment. What is the aim of our solidarity? And where do those commitments come from? In our order, we help people in need and we cannot afford to stop our missions whoever they are, we need to commit it from our heart. The third and last one is solidarity. Requires action that also changes us, perhaps even a sacrifice. Well, sacrifice is the best projection of an action of solidarity to attract sympathy of all men. Here's the question, what I am willing to do and give up in order to ensure the well-being of others, whether they are like or unlike me. I will leave that question to all of you. So for you to ponder it. For me, as a knight, I will always look at others' eyes. I will I always listen to others' ears, and I always want to feel other hearts. And for the extra note, the Philippines will be celebrating 500 years of Christianity starting April 17 next year, 2021. This is a very significant um, event for all the Filipino Catholics. As you all know, that the Filipinos are the fastest growing immigrants here in the province of Saskatchewan. I encourage all of you, all councils, to create a program as soon as possible that will appreciate all Filipino members in each council prior to this celebration. A program that will appreciate them to bring 
their friends to join in our order. And for the last part of my report, I want to introduce two brother knights that are now part of cultural diversity. From Yorkton is brother Jonathan Rosas. He is a member of the executive of council number 2031 St. Gerard. And from Saskatoon is brother Clint Elemanco, a council faith director of San Lorenzo Ruiz 11429. These two brother knights will serve as coordinator in their area and will help to promote the Catholic faith and promote cultural diversity in our jurisdiction. Their names, emails, and contact numbers are in the state roster under cultural diversity. Let's welcome them. Thank you, and God bless us all. Be bad, Jesus. Thank you very much, Brother Marty. Is there any questions for uh, Marty? Seeing none, we'll move on, but it's always a good report, Marty. Thank you so much for those ideas and very good thoughts. So we'll move on now to uh, if I can round table in. chair. I don't know, Brother Dan, if you saw that Brother Al Dion was looking to have his hand up. I, I didn't see. No. I just, but, I clapped. It was oh. clapping. So Brother Al, you can uh, do the round table uh, chair report now, if you'd like, please. You bet. Thank you. And uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, the roundtable program really didn't get established this year at all. No reports were sent prior to basically June the 1st. So therefore, we, in effect, are restarting all of the roundtables by using the report 2629. With that in mind, what I'm, I've established is my own little program here. And I'll be contacting each one of the uh, district people along with the uh, Grand Knights of the information that I have on, on site and seeing if they are still in existence and still doing the things that they were, if they wish to still continue to have a round table in their area. The round tables are really important in trying to bring in those orphan parishes that do not have a representation of the Knights of Columbus. In this way, the father or the priest in that area has a contact for and along with the parish councils, the parish financial councils, to see if they can get some assistance from other people in the area. So with that in mind, uh, there's a couple of things that I'd like to just point out. With the round table, there's no meetings, so they don't have to worry about having a meeting. The round table chair is an appointed position by the Grand Knight. It's not an elected, it's not, so it's somebody that is selected or somebody that is willing to do that coordination between that parish and the sponsoring council. The parish, uh, the round table does not have any financial obligations. All of its financial obligations are done through, this, through the sponsoring council. So therefore, any money that it creates or any money that it generates has to go through that sponsoring council. The other nice thing about it is it introduces the Knights of Columbus programs and activities to parishes that don't know about us at all. And with that in mind, I'd like to invite everybody to understand that all of our parishes need to have some representation. So as you're talking to any of your councils or anything like that, look around and see if there are parishes in your area that do not have any type of representation that should have representation. Along with talking to the local parish priest who in a majority of cases has more than one parish that he's looking after. So if he has more than one parish that he's looking after, then please let him know about the round table concept and have somebody in your council that will represent to him that parish. Thank you very much. I'll take any questions and I'm done. Thank you. 
Thank you, Brother Al. Any questions for Al? I think we're into lunchtime now, so we're going to uh, postpone Greg and the uh, Father McGivney Guild till tomorrow at 9.05. So I'll turn the mic and the chair back over to uh, Worthy State Deputy Joe. Thank you very much, Brother Dan. Um, I was, uh, it's, 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 I know it's hard to uh, limit time when you're trying to talk about so much information. Um, we'll do what we can here to, maybe we'll just postpone after lunch a little bit, 10 minutes if we can. Um, but it, Brother, or Worthy General Agent Mark, did you want to speak now? Uh, your, your microphone's off. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, it's, it's at your pleasure, uh, worthy state deputy. If you want to uh, put me right after lunch, I'm if, willing to do that, whatever you think. Okay, if you're going to be more than 10 minutes, I would I'd rather wait till after lunch. I don't mean to wait. I don't, no, but if, if I'm you're not just sure, gonna be I usually go 10 or so, but yeah, we can wait if you guys want to break five after now. So, okay, if uh, if everybody's fine with that, just just, just to allow, uh, I know it's been a long morning and sitting down at these, after a while, people kind of glaze over. So uh, if, if everyone could just be respectful, I guess after lunch, we'll just, we'll uh, we'll still start at uh, quarter two, but we'll just put uh, our worthy, I want to make sure our general agent gets time because he's a valuable part of our team. So Father Ed, if my screen's not big enough to have enough people on. I'm here now. Thank you, if, Father Ed. If you could uh, lead us in grace, that would be uh, fantastic. <clears throat> yes, I'm always remind, especially today. I'm reminded of Abbot Peter uh, because Abbot Peter refused to bless the food until he saw it, <laughs> and I don't even have any food here for myself yet. So I guess I will have to break that rule. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, Amen. look upon us. Uh, look upon the food that uh, each of us will will uh, will imbibe in over this uh, this uh, half hour. Be uh, always ready to feed the poor and feed the, those in need. And so we we say, bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bon appetito. Thank you very much, Father Ed. And we'll start at exactly 12.45 and I'll invite Mark, our general agent, Mark Lewis, to speak at that time. So thank you for your patience and see you in 38 minutes. And I will be closing this session and don't forget to restart in session two of your Zoom.